Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. This is Gandhi's Thoughts number 40. I am Gandhi. And today, you know, I decided that I'm going to talk about uh, 2005 all the way through 2007. But not the beginning of 2005 because I kind of talked about that in my story of Gandhi, which is episode 30, if you guys want to go back and watch that. So in this one, I'm going to go end of 05, starting after Seattle, all the way through the National Championship of 2007. So let's let's begin. This is going to be a long one. I'm going to let you know ahead of time in advance that I will be here probably around an hour, hour 30 minutes. There's really no way to make this quick. Uh, there's a lot of memorable sharing. There's a lot of stuff that you guys as a viewer don't really know went on behind the scenes with maybe team decisions or what was going on with me mentally or my teammates mentally. So let's begin. After Seattle 2005, uh, well, we actually, to, to make it here for you guys, I was just coming off an event win. It was me, Shockwave, Defy, and Karma coming back from Seattle 2005. We played against the Straight Ripping team, which consisted of Detach, T-Squared, Fallacy, and I want to say Mac. But I'm not 100% as to what the Straight Ripping team was because it was kind of a joke. Right? There was no reason they should have been tough, but we found ourselves being down 2-0. And we all took, uh, we raised our hands like little school children. We were like, ref, can we go to the bathroom? We did. Came back, 3 0 them, and then it was, see you later. Uh, I don't think we had any problem with them in the finals. And, and we felt really good as a team. I remember the oddball, the oddball Warlock game, we all had over 40 kills, and we all had like over 30 assists. It was a fucking slaughter of straight ripping. So that was Seattle 2005. So now it's, as a trio here, going into the next event is going to be Chicago. Now, Chicago was a big event because, you know, points for everything going into the national championship. So everyone knew we had to be there. And there was a lot of events in 2005 where myself, Karma, and Shockwave couldn't attend because we didn't have the money to do so. So we all make sure we can go to Chicago. Now, it's, like I said, it's me, Karma, and Shockwave. And we don't have a fourth because Shockwave made Sergio quit. And we, we, are, we aren't sure. So we're stuck between Defy and looking at other prospects out there. there there's a lot of people coming up, and we, we just want the, the best fit for our team. I remember I looked at G-Spot for a little bit, and I said, G-Spot, you know, he's got a really steady aimer for 10 cents, but what's it going to be like to having a person from Canada on our team? Uh, not that Canadians suck, but I just didn't want to have to deal with, you know, time problems or him not being able to, you know, to make it or him trying to be like the adult on the team because he was so much older than us. I didn't want to have to deal with any of that shit, so we erased G-Spot right off the map. And so I remember we watched Strongside play at a couple of events in 2005. We were like, you know, maybe this guy's got some potential. And we were talking to Defy, and we said, you know, Defy, uh, we're interested in running games with you. Uh, we'll keep you posted. We're going to run games with Strongside real quick. And he goes, all right, awesome. So he's happy, right? Because, I mean, we just won an event with Defy. Like, looking back, it's kind of weird that we didn't pick up Defy, but so here's why. So we're running games with Strongside, and I shit you not, it's... Uh, we're, we're playing... I think we were playing like Exit Boon, some team that was really, really good online. And I remember his capture flag on Sanctuary. I get sniper off the beginning. Uh, I, I get a couple kills. I get taken down because of online. It wasn't because I didn't. I got outskilled, right? That's 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 Halo Winger right there. And so I remember strong. Uh, uh, Shockwave's running the flag. I I died on our carbine. Shockwave's running the flag. Karma's like ring to their pea shooter, and Shonks had somehow gets a sniper in their rocks and he he gets like a triple kill and like everyone is so that that's all four dead and then they all spawn again and he gets like a kill tack man and back then it was a kill tacular for four kills not an overkill just to make everyone clear here so he gets a kill tack and then he's got like one shot left and he kills a guy who spawns rock it was the most cr ridiculous thing in the world i remember shaco was running the flag and back then you could jump and throw it you know xa jump throw jump throw jump throw and I remember Shockwave just goes, fuck it, we're picking him up. And I was like, yeah, it's pretty fucking impressive to say the very, very least. So we made our decision to pick up Strong Side after one game because uh, how can you not pick someone up after a performance like that? It's just really, it's impossible. I mean, the guy he got eight kills in a matter of 13 seconds. It was, it was super, super impressive. And he was also communicating his ass off, which we would soon find out was an illusion. So, we go into Chicago. Now, 
Chicago is a, a big event here. Like as I stated, you got SDK who has yet to drop a, and they dropped one event the entire 2005 season. One event. And that was to TMG, which consisted of Zios, T squared, Fallacy, and Fonzi. F squared, T squared, and the one and only Matt Leto, aka Zios. So they've only dropped one game, and they're coming in, and they're coming in hot. Uh, SDK is there, Straight Rippin's there, and Straight Rippin is a weird backwards ass team, man. And it, it, was, it was the depressing thing on the face of this fucking earth because Straight Rippin consisted of T squared. Fallacy, Fonzie, and Tupac. And Tupac, Tupac was a very, very good Halo 1 pro. He was very, very good. He, he was top 8 for sure. He was probably top 5 at FFAs. Uh, his 2v2s, uh, he won the national championship with, with Killer N. He was a very, very, very good, well-rounded player. He's gotten multiple second places in the 2005 season on Check 6. But he wasn't the best Halo player at this time. He started, he was going out with like Jessica Monder, as you guys know him, Jessica Rabbit, and he didn't really care about Halo that much, and he cared more about like drinking and having fun and, you know, going out with his girl and all that, and rightfully so, right? Like everyone hits that point where they stop caring. But we cared. So there was, there was no reason for it. So there was those two teams. There was us. And then there was Exit Wounds. And Exit Wounds was, it was featured Killer N. And Killer N at, at the event was just, he was God. Uh, the, the things he did was just stupid. Uh, he was still playing five sensitivity, uh, Back then, there was no bumper jumpers, so if you guys ever find this VOD of, you know, Killer and devouring straight ripping on Lockout TS or Lockout Eyeball, whichever one it is, he has to press A, and he played on the Duke. So he was, it was, it was honestly ridiculous to watch. But so, uh, we don't, we unfortunately never get to play Exit Wounds. And our matchup for Exit Wounds was perfect. That, that was like who we could beat. We beat them all the time online uh, on their host. And if you won off host online, it was like a guaranteed win for you at that event. 100%. There was no questions asked. You could beat them at the event if you beat them on their host online back in 2005. And so... You know, we don't get to play them. Instead, we play Straight Rippin, and we play them twice. And Straight Rippin beats us twice. I remember it was Game 5, or it was Game 11, or Game 10, I don't know. I don't even know if we took it to 11. I don't even know how many, you know, what the series was looking back on. I really don't. It was it was that long ago. But so, I remember it was, it was a lockout TS as the final game. And Pac was... Uh, the, their setup was is they had a guy's hot BR, they had a guy's second BR bridge, they had a guy window, or uh, window and slash front library, and then they had Pac sitting bottom BR. It was the dumbest thing in the world. And, but as, you know, being young and stupid, and as everyone knows, Shockwave, Shockwave has one gear on lockout, and that gear is his push, 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 keep charging, keep charging, keep charging. Who cares if you die? Basically, this is how Shockwave's mind worked on <laughs> Lockout. It was, oh, I died. Well, now I'm 0-1. Now I have to make it even. I got to make it 1-1. One one. Oh, I died again. Oh, I got to charge again. I got to make it down only one. Oh, I died three times. I got to charge. I got to get another kill, so I'm only 1-3. Like, this is, that's how his mind worked. It wasn't, I'm not saying it was the worst thing, uh, but that's how it worked. But so we were unable to adjust to the strategy, and they ended up beating us. Fourth place. Fourth, fourth place, and in the 2005 season, there was no money to fourth place. And so, uh, we, we got our bags, and we went packing. I remember, uh, Killen was there. It was, Killen was there. It was me, Killen, Shockwave, and Karma. Uh, Strong's had kind of disappeared for a bit. I don't know, actually, where he went to. Uh, but I remember there was a McDonald's about, like, I don't know two football field flanks up the road. It was like negative 17 with wind chill out there. And we were like, we're fucking going. And th this was like the bond. This is how the bond kind of started between uh, myself, Killing Karma, and Shockwave. And I don't know, although it's kind of faded out, you know, uh, due to long distance and them not playing anymore and everything else. But, I, you know, I still, I still hold it true to me. Uh, and uh, I don't even know if they remember it. But I remember walking. Uh, I remember walking like two football fields to get to this McDonald's, and it was fucking cold, man. It was awful. It was like a the day after tomorrow scenario with us walking through it. But 
you know, we got there and we sat down, and we were hanging out, and, and we decided, you know, like, hey, well, you know, we're all really good friends. I think, I think coming in for the national championships, like, we're, we're going to be fine. I think we're going to be fine. So we had this talk, and it was very, very refreshing. So we all get home. Uh, we talked to Strong Side. We talked to everyone. We started on, and, and there was no rest days back then. Uh, Halo 2 was still so fresh in everyone's mind, and everyone wanted to be the best. And the best thing about Halo 2 was that you could play it for hours and hours and hours and hours and hours without getting tired of it. Man, does that... God, do I miss that. <laughs> uh, it's the same thing with Halo 1. So we got home. We started practicing instantly. And then we decided, you know, maybe we should get a land going. And so we were like, yeah, but who do we want to land? And so there was a bunch of team shifts coming up there because since, you know, Straight Rippin' lost to Exit Wounds, they broke up. T-Squared left that team, and he was looking for a team to get on. And he ended up on Legends. Now, the Legends squad was T-Squared, Vash, Defy, and Toxin, right? All awesome. pretty good team. Uh, pretty, pretty, pretty good team. The, the, their kryptonite was uh, Toxin, which we'll get into in a second. So, we know there, and so, right away, Switch comes on in my mind, and I go, well, Vash and Defy are like an hour and 30 minutes for me, there's no reason why we shouldn't get a land with this team. So everyone's like, okay. And I remember Shockwave sat me down, uh, well, didn't sit me down like in a room, but he, uh, we're sitting in a room, and he goes, Scott, we're going to be landing with T-Squared. And I go, yeah, no. He goes, you can't be a fucking asshole the whole weekend. And I was like... I can't promise that, man. And if you guys know, if you guys have seen 15-year-old Gandhi, you know. That's a fucking asshole. But so, <laughs> it was just like, you, you can't be an asshole. And I was like, I got you, man. I got you. Don't worry. I'll be all right. And so, yeah, we, so, we go to this land. So, it's me, Karma, uh, Shockwave, Strong Side, taking on Legends, which was Vash, Mac, or Vash Defy, Toxin, and T-Squared. And we're at Detach's house. Detach was such a nice guy because I think his parents were out of town, and that's why he was able to host the land, or they were in town, and that's why they were able to host it. I, I can't really remember why, but I, th I know we got permission. And Detach was the best gamer on campus, so they knew how he got down. They knew how he got down. And so we're landing that whole week, and we... Strong sign ends up getting a shirts made. So I have a shirt upstairs with my little grunt. It's a red shirt, and I got the white grunt, and on the back it says Gandhi Shockwave has one well, with the brute head, and on the back it says Shockwave. Karma's got one with the fucking sword and the wings. It says Karma. Awesome. It was just it was those little things that kind of put us, you know, all solidified us as one. And, you know, we're landing the whole time, and we feel good. I don't think we dropped any series, and if we did, it wasn't, it's whatever. Uh, we felt really good, but the main thing we noticed was is that, you know, Strongside didn't communicate. And, and we knew that. We, we, we knew that uh, from the last event. And so we tried to work on that, but, you know, there's only so much you can do. And Shockwave barely, very, very rarely communicates as well. So that's, eh, it was what it was. But, you know, we had raw individual skill, and we've been playing out of our fucking ass. I mean, we land for a whole week, and I gotta say that we probably, <laughs> I, I can't tell you how many series we went through before that national championship, but it was a damn lot. Anyway, I'm talking a lot of series in that week. So we showed up to the national championship, and the 2005 national championship, which was held in New York, uh, right next to the Hudson, <laughs> Uh, this is just the shittiest body of water of all time, and it was like the biggest prize pool at the time, and it was $25,000 for first place, and second place, I don't even remember, and whatever, right, and it's, it's irrelevant, uh, but it was like $25,000 or $20,000 for first place, and I just remember everyone being like, holy shit, I'm just really stepping it up, and I, that's why I always look back, and I always laugh at the, all you fucking people who like complain about, you know, prize money, I'm like, first place got $675 each in the entire 2005 season. What do you what do you care about? Do you care about money or do you care about being the best? Whatever, right? Fuck it. So the event goes through. We beat we beat legends. We beat straight ripping. We're on fucking cloud nine. We're going against SDK. Right? Actually, I think it was technically Team 3D uh, in the 2005 season. Don't quote me on that. I think they may have switched back to SDK in the 05 Nationals, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure. By the way, Team 3D was a 
badass sponsorship. I was so jealous of those jerseys. They had Sennheisers. They had the works. It's disgusting. Moving forward. We, we're sitting there, and, and we're in the finals. And, and we're in bracket finals. I think we lose 3-1. And then we start mounting a little bit of a comeback here. And we get to game 10. SDK or 3D, whatever their name was, which consisted of Ogres, <sighs> excuse me, sorry, Ogres, Saiyan, and Walshy. This is the same roster they're going to keep all the way through the 2006 season, uh, which is coming up next. Imagine that, chronological order, huh? And so it's, they're up 5-4. to four. It's midship oddball. This game is going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Anything can happen. We're really trying to force a game 11 here. The intensity is there, right? There's one instance. We, we have, we're up about uh, 10 seconds with maybe 25, 45 seconds left. Like, my memory is not the best. You guys can easily find this VOD. I got to think online. So that's that. But, so we're up like that amount of time. The ball is bottom middle. Bottom middle pink side. So pink one is here. Uh, red base? Wait. No, blue. Oh, wow. Yeah, blue base. So pink. Pink one's here, blue base is right here, and on this side is red base, right? Well, the ball is literally right here, okay? Walshy jumps bottom middle trying to get this ball because they're down. They have to fucking get this ball. Strong side spawns either in front of red, in front of red or top of red, and he either falls red one in front of red or he spawns red one. doesn't matter. Either way. So he sees Walshy is going for the ball. He has one job. The plasma grenades on midship were very, very, very powerful because they just got the buff over the uh, at the break or at the uh, at the break at the update, which was the break of the middle of the season, the 2005 season. All he had to do was throw one good nade, one good nade, and down goes Dave Walsh, and we go to a game 11. Well, he fucked the nade up entirely, completely botched it. Dave Walsh gets the ball, clutches it, we lose 6-4. That's that. We knew he choked. That was it. And I knew in my head that he choked. And that's what that 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 was the start of me questioning strong side was that event. Because you know, the thing that separates elite players from normal players is is when the game is on the fucking line and there's thirty different things to do. 30 different possibilities of things you can do. The good player is going to pick the right thing to do. Whereas the average player, the mediocre one, the one who maybe not be that skillful, is just going to panic. You can't panic in the heat of the moment. You have to actually seize it. You have played this game enough to know what's a good play and what's a bad play. And when you make that bad play when the game's on the line, you suck. When you choke on a grenade, you suck. When you miss a snipe, on the flag guy, when it's a routine snipe because the game's online, you're not good. Plain and simple. Sorry to be blunt, but that's just how it is. That, that's the nature of the beast. In order to be the best, you have to hit the best. You have to put yourself in the best situations, and you have to hit the clutch shots. Or the clutch nades in this scenario. So we take second place. We're happy. We're on cloud nine. You know, it's whatever. Uh... We were coming off of fourth place. Obviously, we won first, but, you know, we gave SDK or 3D a run for their money. And that's what mattered at the end of the day. We gave them a run for their money. We took home some change. Uh, Mom and Dad, what's up? How are you going? Uh, we took second. Now, in throughout 2005, for a little bit of insider information here, uh, throughout all of 2005, MLG was really, really slow at getting out their checks. And during this time, and a lot of people, and even a little bit in 2006, I remember a lot of the parents, uh, especially on my team, well, I, I don't even, Strong said's parents don't really count, uh, because I don't think we ever really, my parents ever talked to them, but like Shockwave's mom and dad were very, very concerned because, you know, MLG took so long to pay out their money, they thought they were just lying to us. And we assured them, and we're like, look, Sundance is a great guy, here's his number, and he talked to him, and he explained it all. Uh, but so that was always in the back of their mind. They just kind of thought we were getting exploited. So going into 2006 season, uh, the parents started to get a little bit wary. And, and it wasn't just you know, ours, uh, you know, you could see it, you could see it around the league, which was, which was very, very interesting, but it, it wasn't to the point where, you know, it was like, oh, fuck MLG, you're not going there, son, it was just like, 
be careful, you know, and, and you know, and that that's something that a lot of people don't know, and that's something that, <laughs> it's, it's a big fucking worry, man, uh, when I think back about that, like, I, I remember I was getting checks like six to s eight months later, crazy, you just can't fucking do that, so anyways, especially when you have no money, <laughs> I'm fucking 15, what am I supposed to do for work, nothing, uh, besides work on a dairy farm right up the street, right? And fucking seven dollars an hour. <sighs> so, 2005 season has come to a close. It is time to move forward to 2006. 2006, MLG announces that they're going to be partnering with USA Network. The first event is going to be held in the Meadowlands, which everyone is very, very familiar with. That it becomes a staple of Major League Gaming for about the next four years. Uh, from 2006 through, well, I guess three years. Uh, yeah, three years. From 2006 all the way to 2009, that was it. Uh, I actually started my career on TV in, in 2006 at U on USA Network there, and then I started my casting career at the same venue in 2009. First and last. Pretty badass. Uh, now that I think about it, it's kind of nostalgic in its own way. Nashville is more meaningful to me because it's my first event win, my first event. And, uh, you know, th those two things just weigh a little bit more than that. Anywho, we go into the 2006 season. And, you know, we're, we're, we're pumped. You know, we know. Uh, it's still the same trio. Uh, we changed our name from Team Freaks, which was what uh, I can't believe I forgot about that. Uh, we were called Team Freaks. In the 2005 National Championship it was fucking, it was my team name, right? I loved it, loved it. Everyone else was like, eh, I, I thought it was disgusting. Uh, freaks, savages, monsters, beasts, these are the fucking things that I live on, right? And, you know, they, they weren't having it. So I was like, oh, okay, well, and, and so Shockwave and I started brainstorming ideas, and he came up with carbon. And I was like, all right, fuck it, I don't, I don't know anything about carbon, but, you know, do it, and he explained it to me. I was like, okay, makes sense. We'll run with it. So we're carbon. And we go into 2006 season. Uh, we have our first of, first appearance on main stage, and we go against Killer N. And I remember that that's when you saw, and I remember seeing the cameras. And someone put the idea in my head that like you like they're going to capture everything on camera, and they're looking for people to be like the star of the show. And I was like, well, fuck this! Like I'm stealing, I am stealing this motherfucker. And so. I saw the cameras there, I had fucking fans in front of me uh, on an arena, and so the big difference was was from 2005 to 2006, 2005 there was like a little bit of a raised stage with two projectors behind them, well, motherfucker, in 2006 there was a fucking arena on main stage, it wasn't raised, three fucking huge projectors, booths all over the place, Scion XB, Boost Mobile, fucking Red Bull, the fucking works, it was a completely different scene, I was 16 years old having a fucking boner the size of this water bottle, right, awesome, right, so I get on main stage and people are packed in the crowd, and this was like the beginning of fandom, right, this is when people finally started becoming fans of professional Halo teams, and up, all throughout 2005, there was no autograph signing. No one fucking signed autographs. 2006, that's when it started. I remember I signed my first one in Meadowlands in 2006. So game one. We get up there. It's, uh, I think it's like winner's bracket round two or three. I can't really remember. Uh, may, it may have been one. I don't know. We play exit wounds, right? And exit wounds is, ooh, killer end, man. Fucking get out of here, right? Like, I'm not worried about you. So Killer ends up there. And I remember I, Pac was sitting right in front of my face. And and, uh, and Pac and I always got along uh, because he's hilarious. And, you know, he thought uh, my trash talk was funny. So, And plus, I looked up to him. So, you know, when you give someone a mutual respect in a game, like, they kind of give it back. And so I remember, like, Killer Rain was right over there. Camera was in my fucking face. And that's when you saw the fucking yes! Uh, that's when you saw all that shit come out, right? Like, I was annihilating Killer Rain. I made Killer Rain go, like, 1 in 18. And I take that off uh, because I had Sennheisers at this event, right? Because the one thing we wanted to do, we wanted to be more like the ogres, right? And I wanted to always be like an ogre. My entire life, I always wanted to be like an ogre. I said this from AGP3 on. I always wanted to be an ogre. I didn't realize that trying to be an ogre would end up, 
you know, kind of hindering myself a little bit. Anyways, I remember I take off my fucking Sennheiser. I have fucking glasses on. I'm like leaned back in my chair for some reason. I have no idea why my posture was that way. When I go back to watch 2006, I just, I was like, what the fuck was I doing? Take off my headset. I go, Pac, man, look at this fucking loser. What an 18. He's a trash can. But I didn't say trash can back then. It was just so bad. It was just like, he's eddied out of his mind. He has no idea what's going on. People are fucking dying, cameras rolling, I'm just on, I'm just fucking so ecstatic, so then, you know, we, we 3-0 them, we're wait on the intercom, and then, uh, then I hear straight ripping and carbon on the side station, I'm like, alright, we're on the main stage, but I'll take this, so we go over there, and, uh, fuck, New York was a tough one, right, so the cameras are there, I think I'm wearing like jean shorts or something fucking stupid, no, 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 I'm not, I'm not, uh, I'm wearing khakis and, like, a weird polo from, like, Old Navy, <laughs> and so, we come out, we come out hot, so, the straight ripping team is Fallacy, Fonzie, T-Squared, and Defy, and, you know, obviously, our team is Carbon, we have me, Strong Side, at the time, it was Strong Side, right, me, Strong Side, Shockwave, and Karma, and so, we come out and we win the first game, and I stand up, and I go, yo, Tom, I thought you were going to throw us, what the fuck's up, look at me, Tom, why aren't you looking at me, and then, they come out, and they win game two, and the fucking asshat steals my line, he's like, look at me, Gandhi, and I'm like, motherfucker, at least be creative, like, I just fucking dropped knowledge bombs on your head that you couldn't even fathom, and then you're gonna steal my line from me, are you fucking kidding me, who are you, right, I was so just repulsed with it. it, it made me sick to my face, ugh, like, come on, man, you can't swagger jack someone's line like that, like, I started, I revolutionized something, and then you just try to ruin it, like, ugh, it's the worst, right, but so they end up kicking the fuck out of us, <laughs> um, we don't even get close, uh, from that point on, uh, we beat every other team below us, and we end up back in the loser's bracket final, so, uh, we're, we're down 3-1, and they end up 6 one us, uh, I remember T.S. Ivory Tower, uh, Shockwave gets shot by all four members of Straight Rippin, and uh, on Penn Holderness is like, oh, let's take a look at this free broadcast here. Shockwave goes, hey guys, I think I got shot by every single one of them. And they literally pointed out that all four, all four of members of Straight Rippin just erased Shockwave off the match. It wasn't even close. And Defy just goes fucking bonkers huge. He's playing like three sensitivity. It's just like, come on, dude, are you, are, you, are you serious right now? He's hitting snipes that, like, no one should hit at the time. Uh, uh, those snipes that he was hitting was way, way, way ahead of his time. Those snipes were about 2007 snipes, in all honesty. He was, he was really advanced in that event. So we lose. We get erased. That's that. We, we sit down. And I remember, I was sitting there and I go, guys, dude, like, what, what do we need to do differently? And, you know, Shockwave was like, uh, Shockwave didn't really have any answers, and Karma was just like, eh, dog. He's like, I need to fucking lose weight. <laughs> and and side didn't fucking speak, so he, he didn't know anything. He was just like, oh, I think we just need to try harder, some, something, something side like right? And don't get me wrong, I love side. I just hated teaming with the guy. Loved him as a competitor, loved him playing against him, but hated teaming with him in every way, shape, and form. And so, we were sitting there, and we were watching the finals, and I remember Ogre getting the sniper as soon as it dropped, and I said, you know, guys, you know what I think it is? I think we really need to start getting on top of times. Times really are starting to screw us over here. And I go, yeah, you're probably right. And I go, I don't, I don't know... I was like, we all know the times, but uh, we all get so sucked into the game. It's like, maybe we should think about getting a coach or like a fifth pair of eyes. Because back then, we were just looking for like a fifth teammate to say times and whatever. So I was like, not a bad idea. Who do you want to get? And I was like, I got no fucking clue. So then we get approached by Triple X uh, about it. I, I think this was after the event. I don't think it was at the event. So I was like, yeah, I'll coach you guys. And, and the reason why I was very, very standoffish about Triple X was because when I was a young kid, when I was uh, 13, I went to an event that Clap himself hosted. It was called Ohio Valley Shootout. right? And it was um, me, my brother... Um, fuck. It was me, my brother, someone else. And a teammate who I thought I was going to team with named Gringo. Now, this Gringo event, uh, the Gringo was, was a guy from Legends. He was really, really good. He was a super, super talented player. 
and uh, this was back in Halo 1, and so we were like, all right, so I was like 12, maybe 13 at the time, my brother was, so that puts my brother at 18, maybe 19, and I remember I was talking to Gringo on AIM, who I thought was Gringo, and I was like, yeah, we're going to the event, do you want to come with? He was like, yeah, for sure, blah, 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 and so my mom drives us up there, and fucking we get there, and like T-Square, uh, not T-Square, like Triple X has played a fucking prank on us, and it wasn't, so we didn't have a fucking fourth, we didn't have a fucking fourth. And we're like, what the fuck is this? Is this real fucking life right now? And, ah, uh, fucking hated that fucking guy, dude. It was the biggest, most disrespectful thing in the fucking world. Uh, just thinking about it fucking pisses me off, dude. Like, if, I, if that was me right now, like, if I went to that event right fucking now and he did, I would have fucking smashed his face in. Fucking fat little rotund piece of shit. Uh, well, anyway, so it was very, very standoffish about picking up Triple X as the coach uh, because of this reason. And so Triple X, like, he apologized and everything. I was like, yeah, whatever, fuck yourself. Uh, just give me my weapon times kind of thing. And so, you know, uh, we go out, we come out to Dallas, right? And so we talked to Triple X, and I started getting a little bit better with Triple X at this time. I, I still don't like the guy, but, uh, you know, he, you know, I'm going to give it a shot. So we get there. And this was like my first encounter with a sponsor, right? And it, it was interesting. So Triple X was sponsored by a company called Liquid Ice. It was like a weird energy drink that was trying to make it on the market. And MLG was sponsored by Red Bull. So they only had one drink obligation, which they still have today, which is NOS. But it's not, it's, but the branding's differently. So what MLG did, and this is something that well, I can talk about in a further video because I think it kind of hindered the scene a lot. Uh, what MLG did was, is so if they, so with Red Bull, no one else could be sponsored by any other company in that venue. And, but not that they couldn't be sponsored by them, like, but they couldn't represent them in any way. They couldn't have it on the jerseys, they couldn't have the cans, they couldn't have anything like that if it was going to be in a camera shot. So it was taken off. So. I remember we're on the side station, we're getting ready to play straight ripping, and he puts a can of liquid ice in front of all of us so we have something to drink. And uh, I remember one of the guys from LG came by and was just like, what? and Triple X was like, what the fuck's going on here? And they were like, can't have this on here. And he was like, what the fuck do you mean you can't have this on here? It's a fucking venue. This is their drinks. And he was like, nope, sorry. It's going to make it in the TV shot. This isn't going to happen like this. If you, if you don't like it, you can get out of the venue. I don't know who said that. It was, not, it was someone like that. But it may have been Clap. I don't really know. But it was someone basically just like, sorry, can't happen. And maybe not in the dickish way that I just said. But essentially, you know, we couldn't fucking have it in the venue because it would be in a camera shot. And that was against, you know, what they were trying to do. So I was like, all right, well, that's news to me. And looking back on that, I can't. It's so fucking crazy, dude. So crazy. But anyways, so we get through all of the winners bracket and we face straight ripping to get. I'm in jean shorts, right? I'm in jean shorts. I got a uh, I got a different pair of Sennheisers this event. This event, uh, Triple X had the oh man, not the HD 555s, but it was like the more of the it was more open eared of the ones. I forget. They were all black. Uh, they, were, they were very very unique. Uh, and Sennheisers are still to this day probably my favorite headphones ever. Uh, but you know. It's whatever. They're, they're just super fucking expensive. And so we play them, and we do a fuck ton better, man. Uh, we get 3 2 in the winner's bracket final, or, or in the winner's bracket semifinals. They go on to play uh, Final Boss again, and we still have yet to play Final Boss, and that's all we wanted to do was play fucking Final Boss. It's whatever. So we lose, and we go back into the loser's bracket finals. And, and we're playing against Straight Ripping again. And we get all the way to game either 10 or 11. I think I think we forced to game 11. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong in the comment bo box, but I think we get all the way to game 11. So we get to game 11, or game 10, and we lose. And, and it wasn't anything It wasn't anything crazy. It was just, you know, we got, we got outshot, we got outplayed, we got outsmarted. I remember they won the lockout oddball. And they won the lockout TS, and we decided we can't fucking lose lockout anymore. And, you know, lockout was a big, big, big contender back then in the day because, you know, everyone played it online, and everyone really loved the map, and it was very, it was a staple in the competitive community, much like Simplex is in Halo 4, much like, you know, uh, Pit was in Halo 3. Right? It was a big staple in the competitive community, and you had to win it. You had to. So we go back. We get back home. 
And there's two concerns on my mind, right? There's two fucking concerns on my mind. First one, lockout. We have to beat it into our heads how to win fucking lockout. The second one, strong side. I'm an asshole, right? All I wanted to do all of 2006 season was I wanted to get rid of Triple X. <laughs> I wanted to get rid of Shockwave, or not Shockwave, I wanted to get rid of Strong Side, and I wanted to win events. That's it. I didn't care about making friends. I don't care about making friends. I didn't care about my competitors. I hated everyone. I came to win events and win money. That's how it was. That's how it should be. This whole friendship frolicking around and fucking lily pads. So what shit in the competitive scene? Are you kidding me? Everyone's fucking friends? Fuck out of here. Whatever. Right? Like, I mean, we still, I still had friends and everything in there, but my job there wasn't to make friends. My job was to win events. That's it. So, I, so the two, con the, the two concerns, lockout and strong side. And so Shockwave reassured me. He was like, listen, dude, we're going to figure something out for shock or strong side. All right, we'll fucking figure something out. And I remember Karma and Shockwave both flew out to strong side's house to work around him. It went Karma, strong side, Shockwave at his house. And they worked on his communication for like a full week before Anaheim. And uh, online, I was still like, dude, I don't, I don't know what to tell you. I, I don't know how many more events I can give this guy. And Shockwave was really, really against team changes. Like, really against team changes. And I was like, I can't. And, I, and I'm always looking to win. So, to be honest, I, I, I can, oh, if I were a player in, like, the 2009, 2010 season, I'd fit fucking right in. Because I'm always looking to win. I'm not looking to sit around and just kind of hang out. But looking back, it was definitely better to sit around and hang out. Anyways, I'm trying to make moves. They're telling me that strong side's good. Whatever, okay? Um, like I said, I'm, I'm an asshole. It's irrefutable. That's how it was. Anyone, ask anyone, ask anyone from the 2006-2007 season who played against me or teamed with me or talked to me, I'm an asshole when it comes to winning events. All I cared about was winning events. I fucking had dreams of winning events. I had dreams of getting kill techs. I had dreams of just winning games. I had dreams. I had visions. I would have like random hallucinations where I would be able to figure out like like looking at a ceiling like in school and see like Halo 2. I, like I could connect dots and make Halo 2. I was a fucking lunatic. But that's what madness does. Madness breeds greatness. All the greats are a little bit mad. Michael Jordan, mad. Muhammad Ali, Matt. Muhammad Ali, fun story here for you guys who don't know anything about competition. Muhammad Ali once drove a car into his competitor's front yard and tried to fight him in his own front yard. That's fucking madness, man. That's how I was. I cared about winning and winning only. He drove a fucking car into the guy's front yard and tried to fight him in his own front yard. Badass. Amazing, right? Michael Jordan, same thing. Everyone knows Michael Jordan. He would stay in there and do sprints until he fucking threw up. Always taking shots all day. Everyone knows Michael Jordan's story. But Muhammad Ali's much more impressive to me. So, we get to Anaheim. Anaheim, we're all pumped up. Triple X is the coach. We're still the exact same team. Team Carbon, everyone's coming up to us. When are you guys going to beat Straight Rippin? And we're like, I think this is the event. Round one, easy. No brainer. Round two, we go against FBI, the agency. Now, this FBI, the agency, was Macchio, Victory X, Pac, and fucking Dirk McGirt. Right? right? Like, four players we give no respect to. None. Zero respect given to any four of these players. And we look right over them. We look right over them. And... Suffice it to say, we learned our lesson from that moment on. We looked right over FBI, the agency, and we just decided, eh, fuck it, we're going to be able to beat them very, very easily. Not the case. Anaheim was the event. Anaheim 2006 was the event from hell. It was the craziest event of our life. If you go back and you want to have a blast watching VOD, if you can dig it up, Anaheim 07, don't watch... Don't, don't watch like the, ML, or the uh, MLG TV show on USA Network on that show. Fuck that. Find the VOD. It was amazing. We lose to FBI the agency. Winner's bracket round two. Winner's bracket round fucking two. Three to two. 
We lost on T.S. Warlock in the game 5. Pac went like 18 and 11. Something crazy. Uh, I, I know it doesn't seem crazy, but uh, 4v4, Halo 1, that was, or Halo 2, that was pretty, pretty impressive stats. On Warlock TS especially. And back then, it was start, you started with the Carbine. It was called, we called it Star Wars. You started with the fucking Carbine. It was a chaotic piece of shit. So, we lose to them, and we go into the loser's bracket. And first team we play against is Burns' team. And uh, Burns is a VGA local. Uh, VGA was a land center that I went with some of my first events uh, in 2005 with, with Bash Defy Mac. Uh, we play against Burns' team. They take us to game four. Right? And I'm like, dudes, what the fuck is going on here? Like, I'm trying to win, and we fucking suck. We beat them, and then we get... So, th this was Friday. Uh, yeah, this was Saturday. So, Saturday night comes, right? And we have our last match of the night to play, and we play SV, Storm Ventures. And it was Ramby. Um, it was Ramby, Nated, Legit. And Sir, Sir Samurai, I want to say. I'm pretty sure it was Sir Samurai as their fourth. And they were a good team. They really were. Everyone knew them as good players going into this event, but we didn't give a fuck. So, we play them to advance into top 16. Like, this is a matchup that you shouldn't see until, like, you know, top 8-ish, right? Maybe to go, maybe winner's bracket to go into top 6. Like, for the winner semis, like, so it'd be winner's quarterfinals. But no, this was for top 16. So, we, we win the first game, they win the second game, we win the third, they win the fourth, we go into game five. T.S. Warlock, again. T.S. Warlock was the most random game type out there, right? And although everyone knew it as, like, random, for whatever reason, there were stats proven that Final Boss had won this game type more than every other team, or whatever, so it must not be random. Whatever, man. Whatever. But I don't think this one... Actually, no, I'm sorry. It was not Star Wars uh, when we played FBI the Agency. It was not. 2005 was the Carbine start. 2006 was the BR start. So we're playing SV, and before the game starts, I, I remember Karma looked over at us, and he goes, Listen, dogs. Because Karma always used to say dog, and he goes, Listen, dogs. Hold portals. Hold portals. Because we had no strategy. He just goes, Hold portals. Communicate. Keep the intensity up. I said, Right on. So we get in there. We're fucking screaming. Everything's going crazy. We're down. And game gets out of hand. They get a couple camos. And camo was top middle. And they had portals. Everyone knows basically Warlock. Uh, they get a couple camos. And they start going crazy. We're down 42 to 37. And I remember Kar Karma grabs a shotgun. So uh, when you spawn on a flag, if my tits are the flag, uh, down here on this side is... Well for, well, for you guys here, and for the viewer and the camera, this side right here is going to be ramp side, and this side right here is going to be health back side. He drops down health back side, and he grabs a shotgun, right? He grabs a shotgun and goes to the portal. Ramby comes through, shotgun melee, he's dead. Uh, so we're, we're, we're down by four kills. He puts through, Nate is there with the fucking shotgun. He doesn't have a shotgun. Karma does not have a shotgun out. He fucking melees. Uh, Nated misses the shotgun by like a mile and a half. He bit double melees and down. Comes back through. Legit's right to his right. BXRs him. We're down by fucking one kill. It's amazing. It's a crazy comeback. He goes back through the portal. He gets another kill. Karma's just devouring people, right? And so meanwhile, as this is happening, like I'm trying to find my bearings. Triple X says there's a camo coming up in a couple seconds, and I get in position. I'm up top. I'm just trying to keep Karma alive here. Karma gets hit by a nade. He calls out Ramp Portal Dog, and he call, and like that was basically directed right to me because I was right next to him. And so I get that camo, and I look, I throw a nade, I kill that guy, and then he ports, Karma just keeps porting back and back and back. And then, meanwhile, Shockwave's running around bottom middle. Now, bottom middle, you had an opening in the middle, and you also had the ring around the rosy. So Shockwave's running there, and strong side, I, I, strong side, I think, is hiding on the plat or something. I, I, I don't know where he was or what he was doing. I just remember what us three were doing because I could see our three screens. 
So I'm poor, uh, I'm covering him from all angles, and the camera's going to last me a good long while. So I'm covering Karma from all angles that I can, and I'm laying down fire, I'm calling them out, and I remember they all spawned green or yellow flag. I want to say it was green flag. They all spawned green flag, and we're literally four kills away from winning this from winning this game and advancing just to top 16. And this is Saturday night at like 1 a.m., 2 a.m., and we get them all, and we kill them all dead, and they fucking die, and they they're, they're all depressed, and we're fucking... So ecstatic. We're so fucking happy to be in this still. And so we shake their hands, we say good job, blah blah blah. We'll see you guys at the next event. We wake up, we get a good night's sleep, we come up, we still got more losers bracket to go through. We end up beating uh we end up matching up against again with the agency, FBI the agency, uh which was, you know, Pac and friends. We beat them uh six six four, I think. I think they won one game. But we beat them six four. No sweat off our sack. And right, just get out of here, clowns. Move on. And now we finally play straight ripping. We're in the loser's bracket finals. We finally get to play straight ripping. We have played so much Halo at this point. We are beyond burned out, to say the very least. Uh, when, when you make those loser's bracket runs, and I know a lot of you guys haven't been to events, or if you have, you may not have had the exact same luck uh, that I've had uh, with tournament placings and everything. When you make those loser's bracket runs on Sunday... There's no time to eat. There's just, there isn't. You can't get food. You Unless you know someone who's going to help you get food, you're not getting food. <sighs> Excuse me. <laughs> you're not going to get food. There's just no way. And so, we had no food in our system. All we had was water and Red Bull. <laughs> so we're jittery messes. But anyways, we, we play straight ripping and we fucking 3-0 them. So fast. And I remember I fucking let out this triumphant roar, man. I was so, so happy to win. And we all were pumped out of our mind. And finally, we get to play Final Boss. And I remember, all I remember was Game 1. Game 1 was Capture the Flag on Beaver Creek. And finally, they changed it so Host doesn't get color. Okay? So finally, they started making it a little bit more fair that... Host did not get color because Ogre won at the very first 2006 event, went 57 and 14 with Host on Capture the Flag on Beaver Creek. Clearly, there's something skewed here. Uh, Host in Halo 2 is just a fucking monster, just a complete monster. So uh, we play them, Capture the Flag Beaver Creek, we're blue base. We have Host. Uh, we play them. I get a sniper rifle. I get a couple triples. I rip Walshie's face, dropping into the base. I'm talking shit to them. Uh, we were up like 2-1 to come back to win 3-2. That was it for us. That was all she wrote. Uh, that game, if we won that game, we would have had a chance, but that first game with no energy and no momentum, just spiraling down into hell. Oh well, right? And so that was the, that was the series. They, they beat us 3-0. Uh, we went home packing. And I was still worried about strong side. I, I wanted to make a team change right then and there. After that event, I said, listen, we're not going to beat final boss without making a team change. We have to get a team change. I think we should get to five. And they're like, no, nah, I don't know. I really like strong side. I'm like, dude, we have to get to five. Like, it is time to get to five. They're like, well, let's give him one more event. I was like, listen, I've given him four events. It's like, sure, I wasn't the best. Because I wasn't the best in 2005. I was, I was like a top 12 player. Uh, but first, like, I kind of had the same syndrome that Captain Anarchy had, and still has, in my opinion, to this day. Uh, and that's, uh, I didn't perform well versus Final Balls. Not that I didn't perform well, but I wasn't, like, fucking the normal Gandhi. I wasn't ripping people's faces off. I wasn't dropping huge plus minuses. It just wasn't how it worked. So, anyways, I, I, I want him gone. I want Strong Set off the team. Like, that was enough for me. You know, we, I, I said, look, you guys went out there. He still doesn't fucking communicate. It's time we make a team change. They're not for it. All right. It's like, well, we have to land before Chicago. So we land before Chicago. And now throughout the 2006 season, a team emerged that was really, really good, and they ended up becoming our friends. And this team was, of course, EX. Now, EX consisted of Ghost Ayami, who was at the time referred to as Little Triple X because he had receding hair. Uh, he was a little chubby guy, and they looked. He, Triple X looked like his fucking father. It was hilarious. So it was Ghost Ayami, Pistol, Mimic, and Captain Anarchy. Team EX. Good dudes, really good dudes. FFA players, great 4v4 players. They were getting fourth and fifths. 
every single event. So we we get in touch with them. We're like, hey, you guys want to land? They're like, yeah, absolutely. Where do you want to land at? And I go. I don't know. And then so I talked to Scrub Twista. And Scrub Twista, as everyone knows, was our fourth replacement. And so, you know, Scrub Twista comes in there and there goes that water bottle spun all over the floor. Fuck it. Uh, Scrub Twista goes, Yeah, you guys can land in my house, I'll bring my team to it. And I was like, Awesome. And Scrub Twista team with Dr. Bob, may he rest in peace, condolences to your family. Uh, I think it was like two years ago that you passed away. You're an awesome dude. Uh Overshield and I forget the last one. Irrelevant. Uh, so, so we go out there to land, and this is the final straw for me. If Chicago, we don't win, strong side's gone. Period. There's no way around it. So we're playing against EX, and this is when Ghost Ayami, this is like my first real experience with Ghost and Captain Anarchy and all these guys. Like, sure, I talked to him at the event, we're buddy-buddy, we say, what's up, you know? Um, and the reason we always did that was because we always fucking 3 out him. And that was the beginning of... Uh, that was like the the start of the Captain Anarchy curse for myself and Shockwave, which the record still stands today, which is the best record in Halo history. Shockwave and Gandhi are 33-0 and in single games versus Anarchy. Rape! Just annihilate! Get the fuck out of here, right? Uh, and so, this is my first real experience with Ghost Ayami and, and the guys here. So, we land for a week. We're out in Chicago. Uh, or Indiana. We're out in Indiana. We're hanging out. We're having a good time. We land. Well, unlike the land before the 2005 National Championship, we are not winning every game. We aren't. We aren't. We aren't even winning every series. In fact, it's all very, very close. And, and I'm getting frustrated just thinking about it because it was so fucking dumb, man. It's just so little things. And I remember Strong Side was taking. Well, Strong Side's prescribed Adderall. Right, so he, obviously he he needs it. But I remember screaming. I was like, "Dude, you don't fucking need this shit. Stop taking it. You don't fucking communicate." And I'm pissed off, right? Like I, I am completely pissed off. I'm 16 years old at the time. I want to fucking rip this guy's face off and get a new teammate. Karma's trying to be, you know, Karma's trying to hang out with him, and Shockwave's trying to figure it out. Man, I, my mind's made up. It, it it's been made up now for about two events, and so I'm like, "Fuck this kid." He's not good. I don't want him on my team. He's not good for us. He was a good player. He just wasn't good for us. And, and so I remember we won like 60... I think we won like 60-40. Uh, out of 100 games, I think we won 60-40 over EX. And I remember going to Ghost. I, I remember I go straight up to Ghost. And I said, Ghost, you're a hell of a player. I want a team with you after this event. I said, We're gonna, I am going to make a team change because I don't think Strongside's going to perform at this event. He's like, all right. So sure enough, we're in Chicago. Now, Chicago, for me, the pheasant run is cursed. Uh, I always played bad at the pheasant run. I got my first, my first and only alcohol citation ticket in the world there, although it got expunged. At the fucking pheasant run. I hate the pheasant run. There's nothing good about the pheasant run. It always gives me my worst place, and it always gives me the worst time in the world. Even the combine at the pheasant run sucked. <sighs> God, I hate it. God, Chicago could just, like, crumble. <laughs> and I wouldn't care. <laughs> uh, but so, we we get into the pheasant run. We're playing. And I remember Straight Rippin got upset, I want to say. Yeah, Straight Rippin got upset by Vegito's team. And this was the event that started the technicals. Now, everyone always gives sole credit to me for the start of the technicals, but it was also largely in part due to Vegito. Vegito, if you're out there, buddy, I miss you. You were a fucking crazy dude. Maybe not the best player in the world, but you were a fucking badass dude. So, two series are going on at the same time. And I'm playing SV... Team Carbon's playing SV, which is the exact same team from last event. So, legit, Rambi nated Samurai. I think it was Samurai. I really, fuck, I really can't remember now that I think back on it. But whatever, who cares? Um, and then on the other side, it is T-squared, Fallacy, Fonzie, Defy taking on Vegito, Shook One, Havoc, and, oh, uh, God, what's his name? Pyrus? Pyrus? Pyro. Yes! And Pyro, right? Uh, and so it shook one gaming, essentially, right? Like, it's this team taking on them. And I remember Vegito is going 
bonkers, dude. Like, T-Squared's coming up to pink, too. No problem. Whip stick. Like, fucking Fonzie gets in there. BXR, no worries. Get out of my face. Like, they're having the best game five of their life. And so Vegito starts going fucking crazy, dude. He, like, rips his shirt off. He's swinging it around. He's like, that's why I fucked your girlfriend, Fonzie. And Fonzie's, like, fucking all fucked up. And then, like, everyone starts standing up. And they're like, fuck you, T-Squared, you faggot. And then, like... Dude, like, this is going on in a Game 5 series, and they're just losing their composure, right? And then someone says something to Defy, and Defy gets fucking livid. It's like the first event that Defy brings his uh, girlfriend, who is now his fiance, out to. And uh, I think it was Pyro, or, or Vegeta was like, yeah, I'm going to fuck your girlfriend too, Defy, you fat faggot. And dude, it is crazy. It's like the worst trash talk in the world. Like, just brutal insults to people, right? And so, like, this is Saturday night. This is just round threes. So this is going on. We're going up against SV. And, you know, th this is a much different scenario. We have no bad blood against SV. We just know what they're bringing to the table. They're, we're firing here. We lose to them 3-2. Right? Like, it was a very... Uh, actually, we may have gotten 3-1. Well, whatever. We're going to say 3-2 for the case of my history. So we lose 3-2. And then I remember I walk over there, and I'm like, fuck, dude. And then we got another loser bracket run to go through. Uh, and I was just like, uh, I pulled Shock, Shockwave aside. I was like, we got to get rid of Shock side. And he's like, dude, come on. We still in the tournament. I'm like, no. We, uh, I'm done with him. He's like, just wait for this to figure it out. We'll talk about this after, but I think you're right. And I finally, I got through Shockwave side. And so I remember we were standing, right? So the, the station where Vegeta was going nuts on was right there, and our station was right here. I remember we were standing right here. And I remember Vegeta played on like 10 cents or something fucking stupid. T-squared comes up, he just spins, throws a sticky, T-squared backs down, blows up Fonzie, and he goes, I'm going to fuck both of your girlfriends, and I was like, oh my god, this guy's crazy, this guy's literally a fucking lunatic, Vegeta is just going bonkers, dude, it's hysterical, and I'm so happy because Trey Rippin's losing, I'm like, yeah, rest in pieces, and so then the game ends, and Shook Win Gaming advances, and I'm like, Wow! Everyone starts crying, clapping, and Vegito fuck gets up. He's like swinging his hat around, like uh, what was that song? Uh, Petey Pablo, right? Raise up. That's what he was doing. He was running around, it was all fucking crazy and shit. And then, like, I remember Straight Ripping got up, and they they were literally pissed. I, I've never in my life seen anyone more pissed until the next day for top eight. So Saturday night comes, we get a good night's rest. Uh, we get one match in the morning, and then we find we we run the brackets in our head. And one of the the, the one thing you guys are going to realize when you start attending more and more events is that you end up knowing how brackets work in your mind. You end up knowing how they work and who you're going to match up with. So we run everything in our mind, and we realize we're going to play straight ripping for top six. It's going to be a big one. Uh, they have higher seed, but it's going to be a big one. So we play them. So we win our first round 3-0. We feel good. Sunday we get some food in us. Feeling good. Uh, we play we play straight ripping uh, for top six. Now this is the famous toilet paper incident. Right? And so we play them for top six. And so, you know, uh, Clap kind of pulled myself and a couple other people aside. And they were like, look, you got to tone down the shit talk, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, Relax, it's not in the rule book, right? And I remember Ray Lau comes up to me. Uh, Ray Lau comes up to me, and by the way, fuck Ray Lau for playing favorites his entire life. Um, <laughs> Ray Lau comes up to me, and he goes, Hey, man, uh, you're going to have to really start turning down the trash talk. It, it's getting out of hand. And I said, We'll make a rule, because you don't have one, and until there's a rule, I'm not changing. And so he, he was like, you're so disrespectful. I was like, I don't care. I'm a competitor. Fuck out of here. So he leaves, and now it is, uh, this is for top six right now. So I don't even know what loser's bracket that is. It doesn't matter. Let's call it loser's bracket round five. You can call it fucking 14. doesn't matter. We're playing for top six. We're playing straight ripping. We are on the main stage early Saturday morning. We go up two to one in the series, and I want to say game... Three was Capture Flag Beaver Creek. They have red base, so they have the advantage, but we have host for blue base. And so we're playing them, and, you know, back then, uh, one of the main things when you were playing on blue base was is you had to stop them. You had to stop them from getting rocket control. So what you would do is you would go, 
and you would go blue tunnels and you would come out the magnum and you would nade rockets down or you would try to nade them out of there. There was no sniper on red base side, there was just the rockets up top and you could nade the rockets uh, from either blue needles or you can nade it from the magnum. So our job the entire time was Triple X would call out where the rockets were and I would go in there and I would nade them down or I would nade them from blue needles or I would try to get up to blue snipes. So anyways, uh, so by negating them from being able to get top rockets made blue base almost fair, but it was still a fucking pain in the ass, but we knew what we had to do. So it's tied like one to one and I don't necessarily remember, but I do know, I do know that we, we won the game type. And so we win 3-1. And so we, we won from Blue Bay side, so it was like a big fucking deal. And before it came up there, I was talking about giving someone a roll of toilet paper, right? Like I was talking to Triple X about it. I was like, yeah, I think I'm going to give someone, I think I'm going to give T-Squared a roll of toilet paper and say you got shit on. And so he was like, are you actually going to do this? And I was like, and I forget to grab the roll of toilet paper. And so we win. And... Triple X goes, yo, you got to do this. You got to do this. It's going to be fucking hysterical. And I was like, all right, fuck it. And so he like unzips his book bag and gives me a roll of toilet paper. And I literally, I walk up and I go, clean yourself up. And I drop it right there. Everyone fucking exaggerated the story, right? Everyone was like, oh, you got fucking shit on and everything. And it was, it was simple, short to the point. I just dropped the roll of toilet paper in Tom's hand and I like kind of whispered in his ear. I was like, clean yourself up. And... Everyone fucking erupts in the crowd. Like, everyone can't fucking believe what just happened. It was hilarious, right? And so then, like, I go to sit over, and I go to, like, stand back and laugh, and T-Squared, like, pushes me, and I'm like, I'm laughing, right? I'm laughing. I think it's hysterical. And then Karma comes up, and he's like, Pfft. Karma comes up, like, there, and he fucking shoves T-Squared, and T-Squared gets all scared. And then, like, Fallacy throws, like, a water bottle at me, right? Like, a fucking empty water bottle. And he's like, you're yeah, real professional, dude. I was like, shut up, Mickey Mouse. No one gives a fuck about you. And I don't know why I called him Mickey Mouse. Uh, I, I meant to call him Beaker. Uh, he, he sounded just like Beaker from the Muppets. But I called him Mickey Mouse, so whatever. Uh, that is what it is. And so that is the infamous toilet paper story. So we beat them. They get eight. They get seven to eight. And they had a really bad event. And it was a very, very bad series of events for them. Defy wasn't happy. Defy wanted off the team. And so now this is going to segue in. So now, we will, now we're playing SV. And this is a continuation series, so it's the first to six, and we're on Sanctuary. I don't know what the series was, but we're on Sanctuary, and I remember, everyone's going to remember this, and if you don't, you can Google it, but this was finally how I got Strongside to get dropped. This play that Strongside made. So, Strongside's ring two, it's a very, very close game, it's in the 40s, probably around 42, 43. Strongside has a Magnum, and instead of BXRing with his BR, or instead of like switching to his BR or doing anything, he tries to fucking pistol this guy. He like melees him and tries to pistol this guy, and then he melees another guy who's trying to pistol fucking him, and he doesn't fucking kill any of them, and I'm like, dude, what the fuck, man, are you kidding me, the game's online, and he's just like, oh, sorry, man, my bad, and then we lose the game. I don't fucking even look at him. I'm like, get the fuck out of my face. Like, I, I walk away. I don't even want to look at him. We just got third place to SV. I don't want anything to fucking do with that guy. Period. Like, strong side was dead to me. Now, at this event, this is where a very, very famous terminology is going to be created here. In the finals, Nated, Nated and SV were taking on final boss. And in that finals, Nated was pushing underneath red base, and he missed about seven shots, right? And it was called the infamous windmill. So when you guys hear windmill, it is from Nated missing all of those shots underneath red base going against final balls. There's your history lesson. So we get back to the hotel room. We, like, kick our fucking feet up, and I'm fucking pissed off. I'm, like, I'm drinking beers. I'm, like, 16. I'm, I'm just fucking pissed. I'm just trying to get drunk, trying to fucking... Remove all images in my head. And it's like me, Defy. It's a bunch of us, right? And we're, it's Anaheim. And so we're sitting there. We're hanging out. And uh, Defy is there. Ghost Ayami's there. And uh, Shockwave's talking to Defy. And I'm talking to Ghost. And I'm like, Ghost. I was like, Ghost, man. That, that, I, can you believe that play? He was like, dude, I... Literally? And you know, you guys know how Ghost talks. He's like, he like fucking pulls his shoulders up. He's like, literally? Right? It's exactly how he is. It's so fucking funny. But now he's got like the hat and he's just like... And so... Well, actually, I, I, on camera, he, he's just like... 
Well, and, and he kind of looks down, and he always looks kind of sad. Uh, but in person, he'll go like this. You'll see it all the time. It's hilarious. So I'm sitting outside, and we're on a little balcony, and we're drinking beers, and I'm talking to Ghost, and I'm like, hey, man, I can't believe that. He's like, literally, I have no idea. I was like, we, I want you on the team. And he was like, yeah, no, but I think Shockwave wants the five. I was like, I want you on the team. I think you're a better fit. I played against you for a full week. With the five, we're too power hungry for slaying with you. We're going to be better because you're a filler. And he goes, I, I, I would be honored, dude. I, I, I don't know what to say. I was like, look, don't worry about it. I'm going to get you on this team. I promise. He was okay. And so Defy is getting the same thing from Shockwave. And now the big thing here was is that the next event, next event we knew, we kind of knew that whoever our team was was going to get the million dollar contracts, which we'll go into depth with here in a bit. It's quite funny. Um, so, you know, it was a big thing. So Defy could have stayed on straight ripping. But he hated his team. He hated Fonzie. He he wasn't a big fan of the whole collective that was straight ripping. He just didn't he just didn't like it. And so Shock was whispering sweet nothings to the Fi and I'm doing the same thing to Ghost Ayavi and I'm just trying to fuck in. I want Ghost, man. I know in my head that Ghost is the missing piece. And uh sure enough we get home and I talk to I talk to Shockwave and I go, Shockwave, look. I want Ghost. And he's like, dude, but we wanted to vent with the Fi in 2005. I was like, look, that was 2005. He goes, yeah, and he's also been kicking our ass the majority of the season. I was like, look, we just beat him twice in a row. Did you really think he was that good? He was like, yeah, I did. And I was like, I thought the Fi was really good too, but I don't think he's a good match for us. So I brought up a gameplay. Uh, we went to VOD, and we're on an Xbox Live party chat because we didn't fucking use Skype. Get, rid of, get out of your Skype. Get on an Xbox Live party chat, and uh, we get on there, and we're looking at VOD, and I was like, look, man, Ghost, look at Ghost play. This is exactly what we need. He doesn't miss. He positions himself. He always challenges for his good players. He's not afraid of the Ogres. He's not afraid of the big players. This is what we need. It was, and so Shockwave somehow started coming around. And if you guys know Shockwave, he's like the most stubborn person in the entire world. He, it could, he could be dead wrong, but if he believes it, like, it's just give up. He's that annoying. Ugh. I love the guy to death, don't get me wrong, but he is quite possibly the most stubborn person in the history of this earth. So, speed things up here, fast forward, we pick up Gosayami. We pick up Gosayami and Orlando is the next event. Unfortunately, when we picked up Gosayami, he was already in college and he was pledging to a frat. Not fun. Not, not fun. Uh, this was my... This was my junior, no, yeah, this was the beginning of my junior year of high school, so I was starting to party on the weekends a little bit and everything like that and hang out with my buddies who I've known my entire life, who I still hang out with to this day, and Shockwave was, Shockwave was a senior in high school and Karma, you know, was doing Karma things. So Ghost was pledging to a frat. So before Orlando, we got a total of 43 games in, 43 total games as a team. The practice, I felt, was adequate uh, because when we played, it was very intense. Uh, Callouts were screamed. Uh, stretch went over religiously. Uh, we, we always talked together. We all had Boost Mobile phones because MLG was sponsored by Boost Mobile back then, so we all had free service, so we would text each other all the time and call each other and talk about strategies and what we thought would work and what didn't. Uh, we were very, very a we were a close unit, but we only got 43 games in, which was not, looking back, it was not good. But on the other side, Final Boss was already slacking off. They had won four events. They didn't think anyone could touch them. It's whatever. Ogres played a lot. Walsh played a lot. Saiyan was non-existent in the squad. So we go into Orlando. And we get to Orlando. And it was it. Uh, we, we, we thought like this was the event. We felt good. We were fresh. And, you know, th we, we, we felt like the team... Sometimes, in my opinion... And the reason why a lot of you guys get all bent out of shape with this whole Warriors debacle with Halo 4, uh, with Rydnib getting dropped for you know, APG, sometimes just adding one player to the team changes everything, and it makes it better. And that the, what I mean by that is, is literally one minor change can, one minor change can make your team that much better. And it's weird, but it's true. And so that's kind of how we felt with... Ghost Ayami. So we only had 43 games in there. We get there early. 
we play in the free for all. Uh, Carmel wins the free for all, obviously, because he's a fucking monster. Uh, myself, Ghost, and Shockwave don't get up from the pro launch. We just sit there. We're gaming. We're gaming hard. There's countless amount of games being played, and we're kicking ass. Karma wins, we're fucking happy, we're slapping hands, what's up dog, that's what I'm talking about, I'd still kick your ass in the 1v1s, and you know that, don't act like you don't know that, because you do know that, he's like, yeah, I know that, uh, because I used to train Karma for the 1v1s, there's your little fact right there, I used to always beat Karma in 1v1s, but the problem was, I could never make it a fucking 1v1s, <laughs> uh, my free for all skills were way below average, just way, way, way below average. So we go in, we go into Orlando, tournament starts, we're raping everyone, we're raping everyone, and straight ripping made a change, right? So uh, the, uh, even though we made a change, there was a couple other changes. Legends was formed, which was Defy, Vash, Mac, and Strongside, right? It was a very, very good fourth place team, very good. Um, straight ripping acquired Captain Anarchy. Which was a terrible decision on their part because he was cursed versus us, but I loved it. Uh, but don't get me wrong, Anarchy was a hell of a player. And so, and then of course we picked up Gosayami. So this was the event where the skill gap became apparent and everyone knew it. For the rest of the 2006 season, Straight Rippin would get 3-0'd by my team, Carbon, and Final Boss. But they would also 3-0 -oh every other team like it wasn't even close. So it went 4th, 5th was like here, 3rd was here. And then second and first were here. We were just that much better than everyone else. It was a fact. So we're sitting there and, and we three O we three O straight rep and not a big deal. I get a I get an overshield on TS Beaver Creek where I get a triple kill, move along, right? Then comes winners bracket finals the next day. We're fucking pumped. It feels like our game. We come out, it's Capture the Flag Warlock. It used to be our worst game, but what Ghost Salmon brought to the team was an understanding of Capture the Flag Warlock, and he also brought the ability to challenge the Ogres at will, and he knew how they played because he studied them. Fantastic. He literally said to us, he goes, look, they play like matchmaking noobs, but with really good shots, so it makes them really good players. Be alert. So, all right. So once he said that, dude, every time they would like go behind the pillar, they would jump out, and I was just like, fucking get out of here. I know what you're going to do. Get out of here. Get out of here. I know what you're doing. Get the fuck out of here. So we win Capture Flag Warlock like 5-1. Smoked. Smoked. I, I think I think we win. I think they win the Team Slayer. We win the Oddball, and then it comes to Capture Flag Sanctuary. Now, Capture Flag Sanctuary, as you guys well are aware, because everyone knows Sanctuary, there was a sword bottom middle, there's a sniper in your snipe putt, and there's a sniper in their snipe putt. When the game gets going, and I kind of revolutionized uh, how to snipe on Sanctuary uh, in Halo 2. Uh, the passive play worked very, very well because there was no sprint, and the angles were a lot easier to hit. And if you hit all the big shots, then there was no way they were getting in control of Ring 2. So I would position myself in the rock. I would change different rocks. I would snipe their courtyard. I would snipe their sniper. I basically erased their sniper from ever existing. And so, uh, I, I'm braining. I, I'm having a very good event. I, I'm hitting all, all these headshots and everything. And then I remember, uh, we all die. Or they, my teammates all die. I'm hiding back BR. They don't see me. They run the flag out, and it gets all the way to rocks. No, actually, I'm sorry. I die, too. I die. They run in the flag's rocks. The sniper spawns, triple X, me to call it. I get the sniper. I, I, brain the, I brain the guy running the flag. Another guy's there. I jump. Double kill. Walshy pops his head out, or Saiyan pops his head out uh, in the courtyard, trying to get the touch on the flag. Bam! Brain. Headshot. Saiyan, or Ogre 1 comes off the respawn. Headshot. I got a triple kill with one other kill. We push in. We tie up the game. It's 1-1. This is game four. Running the flag out. Uh, we, we all get killed, or, so it's 1-1, now it goes back to a stalemate, uh, I, I'm kind of being a little bit passive here, I die with the sniper, pull on my BR, and we're pushing up a little bit, and then it, it, it gets damn close to the 15 minute mark, and as everyone knows, 15 minutes is regulation time, but if it's tied up on 1, it goes down to golden flag, or golden goal, whatever you guys want to call it, I just say golden flag because it sounds cooler than sudden death overtime, so it goes down to golden flag, and I have a sniper, and we're pushing in on their base, right? And we're all in there, and Karma dies, and I think Ghost was in the rocks, and Shockwave was like ring two with the pea shooter. I, I grabbed the flag, because back then you can juggle it, remember? Just like this. So I, I'm running the flag. I have a sniper. I never do this. I never, ever do this, right? 
Because back then it was just, the sniper was so powerful, you didn't want to do it. Well, I throw the flag one step, a guy spawns sniper hut, I rip his fucking face off. I throw the flag again, I'm no shields, over one pops up, BAM! Double kill, flag gets all the way to our base, we win fucking 3-1, Karma's freaking out, everyone's fucking ecstatic, we're in the fucking finals. BAM! Just like that, I fucked up the camera, moving forward. We're in the finals, everyone's ecstatic. Uh, where nothing can defeat us. Nothing can defeat us. Uh, so we won 3-1. So the continuation series, we're sitting there. We're hanging out. We don't even fucking warm up. We're the most arrogant pieces of shit. Uh, warming up was something that we completely thought was horseshit. We said, fuck warming up. We're better than everyone else. <laughs> uh, so we didn't even warm up for the finals. We got on there and we played like a three-minute FFA. And in that three-minute FFA, uh, we would only go for melees. That was it. We went for like BXRs and Bailey's. We're just ridiculously dumb. <laughs> and, and so the finals come around. I think they win like the first game. I think they win the Team Slayer. And then it, it ends up being, we win 6-4. So it goes down to TS Beaver Creek. And I, I don't actually remember the details, but I, I think I... I, I think we just won pretty handedly. I think, I think we won like 50-45, 50-46, something like that. And we sent them packing. It was the best feeling in the world. Nothing can ever defeat it. And so then we go back home. And now for whatever reason, after having that amazing event, I remember I hit a setting crisis. And the setting crisis I had was I was playing five at uh, Orlando. And I, I decided to switch to four. Now, when I switched to four, my BR was a lot better, but my sniper was subpar, right? So we, we, go, th we go to New York. And, you know, we had the whole white screen and all that stuff. That's where, you know, when you guys see the videos of us, like, posing like this for USA Network. And there's, like, the smoke machines coming up. Well, it was all done in New York. And so, and, and like, those interviews where they were, like, sitting in the chairs. And they're like, so what do you guys think is going to happen? We're like, we're going to fucking win, bro. Um, that all happened in New York. So, we, we're, we're hanging out. And we get to New York, and, and we 3-0 straight ripping again with the quickness. Like, they're nothing. It's just a waste of our time to even play them at this point. And, you, you know, we're gunning for final balls. Well, we lose 3-1. I'm playing four cents. I'm not having the best event of my life. And we're just, it just doesn't look good. I think there was a New York top ten plays uh, in there somewhere. And I just wasn't feeling good. Well, we then 6-0 straight ripping because we met again in the loser bracket finals. And we're, we're sitting there and we go, all right, we're down 3-1. Let's fucking do this. We come out, we lose game one. <laughs> uh, we are down 4-1 versus final boss, which arguably the best team in the game at the time, even though we beat them 6-4. It doesn't matter. Everyone was still picking final boss to win. Whatever. Well, Somehow a fire gets sparked under us, and I think I want to say it was Ghost Ayami. Ghost Ayami starts going off, and it was Team Slayer and Sanctuary, and then I get a brainer. I get a head. Sh I, I I get a sniper myself, and I start picking people off too. And and I I'm playing very well for Four Cent Scott. Four Cent Scott was a lot worse than Five Cents, but it was okay because I was still doing well. Like I remember while she came, uh, rock jump up, and I was bonfire, which is ring one, and I jump backwards and I rip his fucking face off, and again, back then, you had to press A, you didn't have bumper jumper, so it was actually skillful, moving forward, and so we win that game, and then I remember, we kept steamrolling, we tied it up 4-4, they win game 5, we win, or they win game 9, we win game 10, and then Ghost goes bonkers on T.S. Beaver Creek, he gets a sniper, and Eric's role, as everyone knows, was a filler. He was supposed to pick up the slack that everyone else... He was supposed to pick up the slack for everyone else. So I wasn't sh I wasn't sniping well, so I was like, Eric, grab Brainer. Eric gets the sniper. And I remember he gets a he gets a headshot, he gets a body shot, and then he cleans up a guy with a BR. And then Saiyan is going up to fucking rockets, or someone's going up to rockets, and he shoots him. And back then... You got de-scoped! Imagine that! It was fucking competitive! It was amazing! Ghost gets de-scoped, and he fucking rips his face off, dude. Rips his face off, and Ghost is like, Woo! And the main thing Ghost did, you always, you always see Ghost do this, too. He's like, Yeah! Yeah! Right? He goes bonkers. And we win that game 11. T.S. Beaver Creek. 
So we came back from a 4-1. Everyone overlooks that comeback. Like, a 4 one's a big fucking comeback to come back from. So then we were really started, like, that season we were known as the Comeback Kids from Anaheim 2006. But now we were really, like, the Comeback Kids. Like, there was just, uh, there was no stopping us. Once we got rolling, there was just no stopping us. So going into New York, uh, Ghost had, uh, so this was all still in that same semester. So Eric was pledging for a frat and everything. Ghost Going into New York championships, we didn't land. We we all had school. We we called ourselves real life kids. Um, that was the thing back there because final balls all didn't have school to go to, and so we called them we called them nerds, and we were real life kids because we had school and everything, right? And so us real life kids had school to go to, so we couldn't land. There was no way. And I remember we were sitting there and. You're sitting there, and Ghost goes, guys, I'm not going to be able to play that much uh, before Nationals. And I was like, what the fuck did you just say? He was like, I have like Hell Week or whatever in my frat, and it's going to get crazy. Uh, there's just there's just no way. I'm like, how many, day, how many games, how many days of practice do you think we can get it? And he was like, three. And I was like, fucking Christ. Here it is. And I, I didn't care. But I cared. Like, I knew at the time, like, I knew our teamwork was so rock solid that it didn't really matter. So we ended up getting 33 games exactly. We got three series in of play before the national championship. But I probably played, fuck, I, I, I must have played damn close to 2,000 games. Uh, I, I had two fake accounts at the time that I would switch between. I had Rainbow Scout 59 and X Crimson Max X, and I was gaming. Dude, there was no one stopping me. I would play 1v1 midships versus Kellen for hours versus Ekbe. Bobby, if you're out there, I still love you to pieces. Um, I, I would do free-for-alls. I would do snipers only. I would do, I, you named it, I did it. I would do hardcore religiously. And back then, you didn't get to vote on the game type. So whatever the playlist was is what came out. Which I think is kind of better now. that it, Like if, when you have like an actual good 11 game type, it's not like... V3, where there's like fucking 2-plot and TD and all that other bullshit. When you have like an actual real 11 game type, you don't need a fucking voting system. You really don't. Fuck a voting system. Just play whatever comes out because you gotta get better at everything eventually, right? Well, so I, I played a lot of hardcore, and so we show up to, to the Vegas. We all get there together. Uh, 2006 was not held at the Venetian. That was 2007. So 2006 was held... I forget. Was it Borgata? I don't know. Ah, <coughs> <coughs> uh, <coughs> uh, man, that was disgusting. Sorry, I still have a, I still have allergies. <laughs> I just, I just hawked a loogie into a water bottle the size of a fucking my fist. Yeah, that's healthy, right? Anyways, <laughs> uh, the Borgata was, I, I want to say it was the Borgata, I'm not 100% though. So 2006, National Championship, we get there, we show up, it was a very, very nice hotel, so I can't remember which one it was. We show up, and we get a room number, right? And Karma turns around, he checks us into the room, and he goes, yo dog, you're not going to believe this. And we're like, what? He's like, the room number is one 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 five fucking ones we're like oh my god it's a sign it's a sign from god that we're gonna win this event fuck the 33 games of practice our room number is one 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 amazing and the whole time we're fucking giddy we're fucking slapping hands we're, like, yeah, man, we're, gonna, win, we're, gonna, we're gonna come on with that hundred grand right everyone fucking knows it and it dude i don't i couldn't I can't tell you anything that happened besides that game number 10 of the Nationals. I remember we steamroll through. I remember it all started off in, in 2006. It all started off, and we steamroll through uh, every team. Uh, straight ripping got 3 0 again with the quickness. Rest in pieces. And then uh, I want to say we 3 won final balls in the fin winner's bracket finals. And then we came out, and it was a 6 4 series. Uh, with us being up 5-4, and then we won 6-4. Now, I remember in that game 10, uh, T.S. Beaver Creek, it was a very, very close game. I think we won 50-47. But it was around the 47-46, it was like the 47-45 mark, our lead. Uh, Karma's, red, uh, Karma's Red Needles, and 
he's red needles and like he's like shooting this guy and no it's 49 47 uh our lead Carmen is like shooting this guy and he's like fucking stands up and he's like dude i'm fucking <laughs> game's over and he gets fucking outshot and i fucking grab it i'm like man it's not fucking over you can't even sit down dude we got 100 grand on the line here and then i forget who made the push but we made a miraculous push and we won it and i uh, it was it was uh, surreal, man. Uh, I remember I gave an interview, and back then, I was 16, I could barely fucking string together a sentence, and I said I wanted a lot of Hot Pockets. And the reason everyone still to this day goes, why the fuck did you say Hot Pockets? Is because Triple X and Kellen put it in my mind that whatever you say you're going to do with that money, you're going to get a sponsorship. And I was like, okay, sweet. And so Kellen, once, Kellen looked at me and goes, yo, dog. Hot pockets, son. We can live off of that shit. And I was like, so Penn Hardness gives him the microphone. And he's like, what are you going to do with your money, Scott? I was like, I'm going to buy a lot of hot pockets. <laughs> and the interview was fucking awful. It was just fucking abysmal, man. I was just so fucking happy. Like, there was no words that could be formed out of my mouth at this time. There was just no way. It wasn't happening. I just won 25 grand each. We each just won 25 grand. There's no fucking way I was ever even saying, a, I was ever speaking to anyone. Whatever. Uh, but so we won that check, man. And I remember it was, it was just about, you know, there, there, there's feelings where, uh, you know, I was actually talking to Nick Marks about this. Nick Marks is a really good buddy of mine from the Gears of War community. He was like, you know, again, he won a national championship in Gears of War. He goes, you know, there's been few moments in my life where I felt weightless. And I said, dude, that's the best way to describe winning that national championship. When you win that national championship, you just feel like there's no, you have no weight, man. Like, it is just, it, it's, it's unreal feeling because all your hard work, your dedication, your time, your sweat, your tears, if you cried because you're a pussy, uh, all of that finally had paid off. And although I hold 2006 Orlando in my heart more than 2006 National Championship, I still love the National Championship. But the t Orlando was the my event. Orlando was my event to say that we had finally beat them. My decision making to pick up Ghost was the best. You know, everything just really paid off. It was amazing, dude. It was the, one of the best feelings in the fucking world really was. And, and everyone always goes, dude, what do you do with that money? And, you know, uh, so, as everyone, uh, so a lot of people don't know this, but so my family uh, at the time, and my family still at this day, we're like lower middle class. Uh, I don't like talking about money because I think money's fucking disgusting. I think it repulses me. And people who care about money that much, I think they're fucking faggots. If you care about money that's not backed by gold because our Federal Reserve's fucking retarded, and, you know, it's whatever, it's you, but I've seen the green monster literally ruin people. I see I see money turn people into evil, evil, evil figures. I see them turning into cheaters, into liars, into just bad people. And I don't ever want to be that way. I'm never going to care about money. I've never cared about money. Obviously, you fucking need it to live, but I've never put money over anything in the world. I put friendship, love, and family over money any day of the week, period. But so, uh, we're, we're a lower middle class family, and uh, my mom's car died, and so I was, I was 17, and since I was gaming, I didn't really need a car my sophomore year, even though I could have drove my sophomore year, so I just got my license uh, as I won the national championship, and so my mom needed a car, and I needed a vehicle, so I bought, I bought myself a 2007 uh, Toyota Tacoma, and be so in no, in 2006, the 07 Tacomas come out, right? Uh, or the 07 vehicles come out. It's just how it works, whatever. So I bought myself an 07 Tacoma. I didn't pay for it outright, obviously, uh, because I'm not an idiot. Uh, and I bought my mom a Mazda 6. So uh, there was there was basically uh, a lot of my winnings gone. And then uh, there was a point where my my pops and everyone there was a very very weird time where amf my dad works for amf bowling if you guys have ever heard of it uh they they went bankrupt so i told them to save money and i paid for a full mortgage so that's kind of where my money's went i'm not here for a fucking pity train i'm just letting you guys know that's kind of what i did with my money and don't ask about anything else because i don't really give a shit oh i bought that piece of shit bowflex too that got about three months of usage out of it so uh 
<laughs> uh, to lighten it up there, that thing's a big piece of fuck. Uh, I gotta get rid of it. It just takes up space. Look how fucking dumb it is, dude. It's just retarded. Whatever. Anyways, um, so that that's where my money went. Okay, so 2006 ended. Uh, we're we're really happy. Ghost lives out. He goes on winter break. We start playing again. Uh, the event was in November. We took a little bit of time off. Uh. I think I took about a week and a half, two weeks off, and I was partying like a fucking rock star, son. I, it was, uh, I went back home, and, you know, I live, uh, it used to be a small town, uh, but now, you know, there's suburbia because we're so close to D.C. that the area is booming. But so I went back home, and I was just like, fuck it, dude, case is a beer on me, right? I'm just fucking living life, right? And we're hanging out, and I've known these guys, and we've all been friends since we were like, you know, fucking four. Uh, so everyone knows everyone, and it, it was just, it, it was a great time. It was a very, very good time. And so we start play, playing again over uh, the 2006 winter break, and we're going to fast forward here. Um, but right before the first event of the 07 season, 07 is going to be quick, just because uh, there's a lot of parts where I just kind of blacked out because I don't want to remember it at all, and it took teaming with Best Man and Defy to remember that uh, some of the events that happened. So anyways... Uh, before the first event, FBI the agency forms, and it's Elamite, Macchio, Victory X, and SK. And so they, like, get buddy-buddy with Final Boss, and basically Final Boss picks up Strong Side instead of Saiyan because Saiyan wasn't playing to the best of his ability. He got a girlfriend. As everyone knows, when a girl is involved with gamers, they fucking plummet awfully. You see it time and time again because people don't know how to balance it, too. They get way too excited, but the problem is it's just an impulse. That's all it is. Uh, you see it with your best friends. You see it with everyone. It's not just gamers exclusively, but that's what it is. So, they try to breed FBI the agency to beat us, as well as 5K. So, 5K, Roy Lunchbox, Fear Itself, and Hokum. So, they all go out to this lane, and we're real life kids, so we don't fucking land. We don't give a shit about a land. So, we show up to the event, and everyone's like, oh my god, dude, FBI the eight Mackie, is like fucking running around. He's like, dude, we're so fucking good. We're going to beat the shit out of you. And we're like, I just, I, I literally look at him like, dude, you're not fucking good at this game. I was like, you're not. No matter what anyone tells you, you're awful at this particular game. He's like, yeah, whatever, Cody. So we meet them Saturday night. It's uh, round three of the winner's bracket. And we get three out. Or we get three one. No, we get three out. Very. Actually, no, hold on. Let me reframe that. So, winner's bracket round two. We play 5K. And we have the fastest series in the history of MLG go down at that Meadowlands event. We beat 5K. In a best of five series, it was the first of three games, obviously, in about 17 minutes. Three fucking games, 17 minutes. You can ask Joker Can't Spell, that is his Twitter, to confirm. You can ask Genius, you can ask anything else. It was the fastest fucking series in the world. We devour them. So we go in and now we're playing the agency. We lose game one, they're talking shit, and we're like, fuck. Game two comes around, it doesn't get any better for us. Game three, we lose, they get fucking all happy, and I'm like... Did we really just fucking do this? Did we really just lose to the fucking agency? And, you know, everyone's like, whatever. And so I'm like, I, 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 I pull everyone aside. I'm like, dude, we got up the intensity. I can't lose to these fucking kids ever again. Sunday morning, we wake up. We have a big breakfast. Uh, the event starts at like 8 a.m. We start gaming instantly. Uh, we run all the way through the loser's bracket. We get back. No, No one's even getting close to us, right? It's just... Straight Rippin' was like a weird fucking team. Tom Taylor was in like a weird scenario with his life. He he didn't decide if he was good or average or not, and then that's kind of what ha where he left off. So that event, we play the agency, and we're like, well, fuck them, right? Who gives a shit about them? And, you know, we get 3 0 in Winners Market Finals, and now we come back. And so we're down 3 0. We win. Uh, game one, or game four, technically. We win game four. They win the next two. They win the next two games. Macchio, Macchio's the one, like, you know how you say never talk shit to snipe down? Well, the same kind of thing is relevant with not talking shit to Team Carbon. Uh, and the big thing was, is Karma really didn't take it to heart. He used it as fuel, the same way as snipe down did. And what happened was, is you unleashed me. And when you unleash me, there is fucking consequences to be paid for. You will get brutally assaulted. And that's just the nature of the motherfucking beast. And so, uh, 
I remember we were sitting there, and Macchio goes, you're not even fucking good, guys. And, like, something fucking awful like that. I look over and go, what the fuck did you just say to me, ape? And he was like, ape. I was like, yeah, your face. You look like a fucking ape. Get the fuck out of here. I'm about to rape you. And I'm fucking livid, right? So we go in. We win the next game, dude. We, come, we smoke them. Smoke them. 5-2. Beat them the next game. 5-3. 5-4. 5-5. Right? 5-5. Five, five. That game number 11. Gosayami goes on a fucking running riot with the sniper. Sanctuary TS. He's making them their bitch. He is single-handedly making them their bitch. And I remember I sat there, and it was after either game 9 or game 10. And I looked over, and it's in a trash talking montage. I'm sure you guys can find it. I look over, and he went, and I go, you feeling confident, bud? And he goes, yeah, I'm feeling confident. And I go, oh, really? Because it looks like you went... Uh, 5-13. and 13. It looks like you're the reason your team's losing. I think you're going to get dropped after this event. And that right there is one of the best signs you can say. When you call someone out for being the reason their team lost and they're the reason and they're probably going to get dropped after this event, not only does it put doubt in their mind, it puts doubt in their teammates' mind, and then it's a fucking bullseye painted on a dog. It's the best line. But no one fucking uses it because everyone cares about being friends with everyone. Fuck out of here. Fuck being friends. You're competitors, not pussies. Moving forward. So we come back and we beat them. And we've had a long day. So we go underneath the rafters. Final boss comes out there, warm up. Farouk gives us the introduction out there. Everyone's all pumped. And we go, I remember I said in the huddle, I said, listen, guys, we've had a long day. We have to beat them in two best of five series. If we don't win, if we win this first series, obviously we have a chance. But we have to come out swinging. So we come out. We uh, we win the second. We we lose the first game. Win the second one. Win the third one. They win the fourth. It goes to game five. They end up edging us out. We were dead. The the game five. I think they dismantled us. Uh, Strong side gets his first event win with final boss. Everyone's all sucking his dick. Whatever. Uh, rightfully so because Strong side ended up turning into a monster in 2007 season. And from that point on in his career, he was disgusting. Uh, and in case anyone's wondering why Strong side didn't work with us, is because well. Shockwave didn't communicate on LAN. I hardly communicated on LAN. Karma communicated a lot and Ghost communicated. But with Strong Side instead of Ghost, Strong Side didn't communicate ever. Uh, so we, we had basically three people, two people who didn't communicate. I barely communicated. And then we had Karma. And then we had Triple X. So as a coach, it's very hard to be going over three screens at the same time. It's very, 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 very tough. Uh, but so the other thing was is I'm the main slayer. I need the weapons, I like the positions, I like all that. Well, Strongside was kind of in the same boat. Strongside needed those same exact things. So we just butted heads. There was just no way around it. I always felt like I deserved a sniper, and he felt like he always deserved it. And then we just, just it is what it is. So we lose 3-2. We go to the next event. And the next event, a fucking God Squad forms. And... Uh, the, the squad was really, really disgusting. Actually, no, 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 it was Charlotte. I'm sorry. Uh, at the first event, um, I think it was Charlotte was the first event. I don't, fuck, I can't remember now. Whatever the first event was, the, the one we just took second at, a god squad formed. It was legit, nated, neighbor, and T-squared. The team was disgusting on paper, just absolutely filthy. Um... And they lost to us and they lost to Final Boss. And they broke up. And I'm so happy they broke up because the team was just seriously out of this world. Uh, they, were, they were really good. And so then T-Squared gets neighbor and then they like do their own thing for the second event. And they get like 7th, 8th. Like T-Squared's having a rough year. And uh, so the second event comes out. We don't lose to anyone unexpected again. We beat Agency. We beat them again in the winner's bracket finals. And then we force a game. Uh, we, we force a continuation series versus Final Boss. We lose, right? So after we lose again, I remember, I remember getting ready to make a team change, and the team change was a very, very interesting team change because, uh, you know, there there was a lot of stuff that could have happened on it. But so going into Dallas, uh, there was two things that were happening. One, at Shockwave's uh, Shockwave on a beach house because his family was very, very well off in Avalon, and so we were all invited out there. It was me, Karma, my mom, my dad. Ghost's mom, Shockwave's brother, his sister, his dog, you know, it was awesome. It was a great time. Uh, but before that, 
uh, I decided I, I really wanted to make a team change. Like I said, I'm here for being a competitor. I'm not here to make fucking friends. I'm not here to have a long-lasting relationship with everyone. I just want to win events. That's it. And I, I think everyone at some point just wants to win fucking events. So we, it's Shockwave and I, and we just randomly play with uh, legit and nated, and we're devouring people, right? And I remember the agency gets on, and the agency was one of the toughest teams in the world to play against online, and we were raping them. We were seriously erasing them off the face of the earth. I get on aim. I'm talking to fucking legit, and Brian Rizzo. If you're out there, you were a fucking monster. And I'm sorry that team never formed because we would have been disgusting. We probably would have been the sickest god squad of all time. So it was me, nated. Legit and Shaco. Just think about those fucking four players, man. Disgusting. Just monsters, especially in the 2007 season. Just crazy. Um, but so we beat Agency online. And like Mackie was like, hey, man, is this going to be a team? And I go, shut the fuck up, Mackie. Don't ever talk to me. Because I still hold a grudge against Mackie. Fuck that guy. Uh, but it, up until Halo 3 comes out. And then I, I, I like Mackie again. Uh, but so, uh, an elephant never forgets, and I never forget when someone talks trash to me or someone does me wrong, and that's how it goes. And so, I'm sitting there talking to Shaggy, and he's like, Shaggy, do you think we should make a team change? And he's like, I don't know, that was really easy, man. And I was like, I know. And he was like, well, everyone has a, every, everyone's going out to, everyone's going out to Avalon to the beach house. Let's go to the beach house, let's probably do Dallas, and we'll see what happens. So, we, we go out to the beach house. Big team bonding here. Uh, a lot of team bonding actually went down at this event. And, you know, when, when you spend four days uh, with your family and their family and your teammates, you know, you learn a lot about each other. And I remember, you know, there was always, there was always kind of like a clash of power uh, of like the alpha male between uh, myself and Karma. And, you know, we, we went to play beach volleyball or uh, beach football. And it was me and Shockwave versus, I want to say it was Ghost and Karma. I, I can't really remember. But I remember Karma and I, I, I remember he came across the middle with a fucking ball and I fucking speared the shit out of him. He's like, oh, that's how you want to play it. And we fucking literally, we went out at like gladiators uh, for like a full duration of the game. I thought I was going to fucking break his femur at one point. Uh, we just went at it. And we hated each other. We were that fucking competitive even in fucking, fu fucking football. Right? It was supposed to be two-hand touch. We turned it into fucking tackle. And Tom and I went at it that entire time. And then even afterwards, we were fucking drawing at each other. And mainly because, you know, one, I wanted a team change. And two, I, was, I wanted to be the fucking alpha male. And he thought he was the alpha male. And that's how it fucking went down. So we're fucking literally colliding, man. And then after the game was done, uh, Ben and I, like, shook hands or whatever. And uh, we were sitting there. And we are like... You, you're a good fucking dude, right, kind of thing. Like, we, we both earned each other's respect a little bit more uh, above the fact that they were, we were players and teammates, and, you know, we won a national championship together. So, you know, the weekend goes on, and I remember, you know, we get, one night we get booze, we find this, like, random party, and uh, Karma and I almost get into a fight with these, like, random fucking frat dudes. I didn't give a shit. I just, we were playing beer pong, and... Uh, one of the guys shot the ball, and one of the things like me and my buddies do is when we play beer, when we used to, because now, who the fuck plays beer pong, really? Uh, on the table, you have the water cup, and you have the cups on the side. Well, they had water cups as the main fucking cups, so there was no beer in there, so I was pissed off. So every time uh, they made a cup, and they would go to shoot again, I would fuck. Well, yeah, all right, well, that was fun. Um, so I would throw the water cup at them. I would just fucking flick it and throw it at them, and they were fucking livid. I just, uh, see, I get into things here. I'm very, very charismatic. So I would throw the fucking water cup at them. And so we, we almost get into, like, a fight or whatever, and I remember we were fucking running out there because the cops got busted. So us four gamers, right? Like, us four gamers, but I guess we were all gamers. We all kind of look gamerish. Uh, we're running out of a fucking party, right? And we're, like, all set. We're, like, 17, 18, 19. We're running out of this fucking bitch. We're all fucking drunk, and it was a fucking blast. And I remember Shockwave just looks at me and he's like, man, I love our team. And I was like, yeah, we're good. We're good dudes. And so we go into Dallas. Now, before Dallas, we also land. Uh, we land against uh, ROC, I want to say. 
Yeah, we went against D Fury's team, which was uh, Shockwave's brother. Shockwave's brother was D Fury. He's a very, very, very good player. It was him, Dysphoria, Pistol, and someone else. I forget who the last one was. And then I forget the other team we landed against that weekend. Oh, I Joe I was their fourth, and uh, I forget the other team we were landing against. Anyways, doesn't matter. And so uh, we're landing against them, and we get the Astros. And the Astros back then were fucking huge. Like, Triple X was talking to Astro, and the mix amp was about this fucking big, right? It was literally a big beefcake. Not even kidding, it was like this. It had, like, a bajillion dials. It was unreal. The headsets, you guys can find them from the 2006 videos. They were crazy. Well, dialing this back here, exit wounds, straight ripping, used these headsets in 2005 and 2006, and no one thought it was a big fucking deal because they weren't winning fucking events. So we get these headphones, we're practicing, we're having a great ass time. I'm playing Six Sensitivity. I loved Six Sense, and that's why I went into Dallas uh, playing Six Sensitivity. That's how it worked. I was playing Six Sense, I loved it. I thought the faster I moved, my brother and I came to a consensus. The faster s setting I can play where I can scan around the map and actually hit all my shots, the more kills I'm going to get, and it, it, it was slightly true, but not really. Um, I'm a big theory guy, I'm big in philosophy, and whenever you can think outside of the box and end up getting that at slight edge, I think it's going to work out for the better. Anyways, so we're landing, and these headphones are amazing, they're working perfectly for us, and, you know, we decide, alright, well, what's the move? And we're like, well, we've got to bring these to the next event, uh, which is Dallas, we have to bring it to the event, I think it's the best thing in the world. And everyone's like, yeah, that's okay, good. And so we get to the event, and Karma has a fucking once-in-a-lifetime event. He literally devours everything in his sight. He is the best player by far at the event, um, which which was awesome. And, and it, but what sucked was is getting the reason why I told the beach story about the alpha male was because I also had a really fucking good event that event, but it was so overshadowed by karma that I was actually I was a little bit fucking jealous, right? And uh, it's weird to talk about jealousy when your team wins, but you get that you I got that feeling of jealousy because you know I still had a good event, but karma was literally like looking back, it was unbelievable the things he was doing. So we beat everyone, we beat everyone, we beat final boss whatever rest in peace strong side it was bound to happen so we really like our headphones we have closed ear we can't hear the other team and in 2007 uh the team had a talk with me and they said you can have you can trash talk a little bit don't do it fucking crazy we got to really focus here I said okay and so with that headset i didn't really trash talk and i kept the communication good and everything was good and everything like that and um i i really thought it, it made us a lot better well, so Walshy contacts MLG, and he goes, Hey, uh, we can't get the headsets that Carbon's wearing. I think they should be illegal. And MLG, without even thinking twice, bans it. Like, these headsets had been in the fucking league for two years already. You didn't think it was fucking unfair when Exit Wounds had it? You didn't think it was unfair when Straight Rippin' fucking had it? They can't hear my shit talk. Are you kidding me? How is that not an advantage? But we didn't bitch about it because we were beating them. And even if we lost the final boss, we still wouldn't fucking bitch about it because we're not pussies. So, sure enough, they get fucking banned. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, there we go. Fucking ban it. That's what we care about. Ban the fucking headsets. So, that's the third event. So, next event is Chicago. The uh, Straight Rippin' 2017 forms. It is T-squared, legit, neighbor, Elamite. Um, if we go back to the Pheasant Run, and as I said earlier in this show, I fucking hate the Pheasant Run. It's always been a bad event for me. So, Pheasant Run comes, Straight Rippin', they come out, and they beat the fuck out of us. Beat the shit out of us. Neighbor has... A ridiculous series. He wasn't missing any headshots. He was literally putting on a show for everyone there. I brought one of my best friends out, Timmy Grant, out to the event. And that was that. This same event, uh, we took fourth place. Like I said, uh, I was a junior going into my senior year uh, around that time. I think it was the summer going into my senior year. So uh, we had a big party in the hotel room. Uh, mainly because I wanted to erase the fact that I think I think that was the event that I got beat by Legend JRG. 
Very tough pill to fucking swallow. The guy wore gloves, his dad threatened to stab me in a knife with a knife in my neck. Um that was a very, very interesting time. Uh the reason that's a little funny story here for you. Um I was talking so much shit to JRG in 2006 and the beginning of 2007 because he was such a tool. He thought he was so good online. And so I made it my personal agenda to always beat him. Well, it was him, Bonfire, it was Luck, and Pyro. For whatever reason, they had a godly event and we played like shit. And so before that, though, in 2007, it was the first event. We played them. And I'm going in on him. I'm calling him fat. I'm calling him homely. I'm calling him stupid. Every time I kill him, predictable. My whole team's yelling every time they kill him, predictable, dumb, retarded, idiot. Um, and then I remember I stood up to him and I said, the only thing worse than your gloves is your aim. And he literally, someone behind him goes, oh my god, he just switched to three cents. So I was in his head that bad that he had to change his settings from four to three. And so his dad, his dad's like behind me because we had the ropes behind us and they were on the inside. And his dad's behind me. And afterwards, he's like this big fat guy. He like looks at me and he's like, I'm going to stab you in the knife with a neck. Or I'm going to stab you in the neck with the knife. And I was like, shut the fuck up, old man. I'll beat the fuck out of you, right? Like, I'm this fucking wild kid, dude. And uh, Karma's like, get out of here, man. And uh, then like everyone comes up. They're like, what the fuck did you just say? And I said, he wanted to stab me in the neck with a knife. And they're like... You should tell clap. I was like, no, I'm not a fucking pussy. I'm not going to tell clap. And so, you know, we, uh, so we meet up with them again, and we get beat by them. And they fucking go in. They, like, 3 out us. And this is Chicago, so it was a bad event. So moving forward here, we went to Orlando again. Uh, Orlando, we played straight ripping, and we lost to straight ripping again. And I think that was the event day one. Perhaps? I think they won that event. They either won Chicago or Orlando. I'm not sure which one. It was Like I said, it was kind of a blur to me because these two events I blocked out entirely from my memory. Uh, but then we got beat by FBI the agency, uh, which was Nated, Macchio, Victory X, and SK. Uh, and we lost on Capture Flag Warlock, which was very, very rare for us. Uh, it was one of our better game types. But Anyways, so Carbon went second, second, first, fourth fourth right and fourth was like a complete embarrassment like third third sucks but fourth is like you're not doing well right like you should be still top three but you're not doing well <sighs> fuck i forgot all about that man like we lost to jrg Ugh. well so nationals was coming around and we're all real life guys this is my senior year of high school I'm going to pep rallies. I'm fucking drinking every weekend. Shockwave's first year in college. He's drinking every weekend. Sh Karma's in community college. Ghost is in the frat. He's a sophomore year. He's having a blast. And, you know, we're like, all right, guys. I remember we, we all got online to play, and we were like, all right, guys. Well, we're real-life kids, right? Here's the recurring theme here. It's like, we're real-life kids. There's no way we can land for this event. And they were like, yeah, no. And I said how are we going to practice this? And so what happened was is MLG changed up the bracket. And how they did it was is so the top eight teams, well, the top seven teams waited until Sunday to play. They waited until Sunday to play for their championship, for the national championship, because it was top eight. And then eight through, so... 8 through 15 waited to play on Saturday. And Friday, every every open team played for the 16th spot. I thought it was a very, very awesome setup. And the reason I like that is because there's one spot on the line for Friday and Saturday. And looking back on that, if I had the same kind of bracket format for a national championship for like AGL or UMG or some kind of event like this, I would love it. Because there's one spot on the line. One spot on the line each single day. It's 16th, 8th, and then 1st. That's a very, very fun weekend to be looking at. So we sit there, we get we probably we probably play about a total of forty games online. We we really hated online practice. We always felt that we benefited more from LAN. And so we played about forty games and so I played I played probably about three thousand games. Easily. I was I would come home on lunch break, I would play three games, I would skip my last period, then other days I got out early, so I'd fucking leave straight from my lunch break. I would come home, I would be playing on Crimson Mass X and Rainbow Scout fifty nine religiously, man. I wanted to be the best player at that national championship. I wanted to win it. I couldn't lose again to fucking JRG. And that's how it went. 
So finally, I get back to five cents vibe. Uh, I played five cents vibe the first three of uh, two events. I was on six cents for the third event, and then I went down to four, and then four again. So our two fourth places, I played fourth. I had it in my head. I had to play five or six. Uh, six wasn't feeling well, so I played on five. I played on a consistent five uh, the entire time. So I was a madman. This is when I started having hallucinations and fucking... Well, not hallucinations. I used to be... So, like, I would be sitting in class, and I remember I'd look up at the ceiling. And, and you know how the tiles have the holes. I'd be able to look at it and be like... I would see, like, Halo 4. Or, uh, Halo 2, sorry. I would see Halo 2. I would I would be able to hear like a lot of things started sticking out of my head uh, like in random communications like one sh uh, one shot for some reason uh, in like basketball like a P coach when we used to play uh, corners which is a game you shoot around the three point line with a doubles partner and you take turns shooting uh, depending you shoot until you miss and then. Uh, he would always say one shot, and I always would have it in my head, like, one shot, there's a guy, I gotta find him, right? Um, and then I'd hear, like, little things like shields, or, or hide, or and all these things really started to blend into my everyday life, and I was becoming fucking manic, dude. Like, I, I remember I thought I was gonna fucking lose my mind, but I didn't care because it was what I loved. Like, looking back on it, I thought I was gonna lose my mind. But during it, it was just, I was eat, sleeping, and breathing halo. In order to fall asleep at night, I would get four hours of sleep every night. In order to fall asleep... I would run, I would lay down on my bed just like this, and I would run maps in my head. I would relive games that I was playing. I didn't record, I didn't have money, or I had money to record, but I didn't have a computer, I didn't buy any of that shit. So I would relive matches from scrims, or matches from, that I played in my head, and I would try to recreate them, and I would fall asleep thinking about Halo, and I would dream about Halo, and I'd wake up and I'd play a game of Halo. I would show up 20 minutes late every single day to my first period teacher because my first period teacher was the boss. He didn't care. He knew where I was coming from. He was my senior year. He was a badass guy. So anyways, we, we all sit together and we are like, well, we have two days of LAN with the tournament structure here for the 2007 National Championship. We have two days of LAN with how it's structured. That's what we're going to do. I said, okay. So we have two days of land. So the first day we get there, we're playing the agency. And Nated, Nated's been going on like terrors at events. Uh, he was playing like seven cents. And everyone thought he was a lot. Everyone gave him a lot of credit for being like disgusting with the sniper. But really, he had like a couple good plays with it. That was it. Like, that was, like, he, wasn't, he wasn't all that. Uh, I, I was still a better sniper than him. So was neighbor, especially neighbor. So was... Fucking strong side. Like, just get out of here. Everyone thought he was a lot better than he really was just because he had a couple flashy plays. But that's like, that's how it works. You get a couple flashy plays in a tournament and people think you're God. When in reality, you're just an average player. Not that he was average in any sense, but he wasn't as good as everyone hyped him up to be. So, we get there and we're playing the agency. And Triple X looks at us and he goes, let's try calling out Nated every time he's alive. Right? So, every time we spawned, we we took a very very unison approach to how we to how we were gonna play teams. We were just like, Nated's life, find Nated, everyone hide, Nated's alive. Where the fuck do we go? Find Nated, or we're gonna lose. And so we that's so that was our mentality. We knew how to play the game, but this was our trash talk. And so we would find Nated, we kill him, and then Triple X would go. Pull the flag, Nated's dead, this is our only chance. And it, what it did was it belittled everyone else on his team, and it got in Nated head, Nated's head so fast. So we would sit there, and we, I was like, Nated's down! Nated's down, the rest are awful! Go, 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 go! And we would fucking storm the base, we'd fucking pull the flag. They crumbled. We 11 owed agency after they beat the shit out of us at the last event. We figured it out. We knew exactly how to play. So then we played straight ripping. And we did the exact same thing for Neighbor. And Neighbor, Neighbor's mental game was so fucked that he didn't even know what hit him. He had no idea what was left, what was up. Black was purple, and purple was fucking gold. He had no idea what the hell was going on. And so we carried this momentum in, and this is exactly how we played. So in the winner's bracket semifinals, we played straight ripping, and we beat them 3-2. Um, I remember this is the infamous, and I know a lot of you guys are Halo 4, but if you guys Google Gandhi Tornado Sword, you'll learn about it. So, uh, this was Game 10. I think it was Game 10. It was either Game 10 or Game 5, whatever it was. Um, game 10 or Game 5 
uh, neighbor has a couple shots in me. He has like I, I jump up the front of the base on midship, so you could jump, jump again. And neighbor was in the back, and he puts like four good shots in me. And I jump, spin around, I'm spinning, then where? Hit him with the fucking sword right to the teeth. I kill him, and the fucking crowd erupts. They can't fucking believe it. And so I'm on fire. By the way, if you watch that series, I literally rape the entire straight ripping team. There is no one who can even come close to contesting with me. I am just literally pillaging and raping every single one of them. And I was back on host. So on host, I was a challenging asshole and no one could defeat me. So we beat them 6-4. And so that, that was the total series. And in the winner's bracket finals, uh, we got 3-0'd by final balls. And so everyone knows the 2007 national championship was won by final boss and they didn't drop a single game that was like the infamous record well so it's game number four we're up 2-1 in midi bomb and so shockwave now going into this event uh shockwave didn't play that much and it really showed shockwave was playing like a complete fucking trash can eric was playing okay for the amount that he didn't play but he still could have been a lot better it was really Carmen and i playing and if you ask People like Elamite Warrior or Best Man or anyone who was there at that event, uh, it was my event. And anyone who tries to take it away from me is a fucking faggot. <laughs> uh, obviously, Strong Side and Ogre 2 played amazing. Like the, At the end of Halo 2, I would say Strong Side and Ogre 2 were both better than me. But at that event, I was probably second best. Strong Side definitely had the best performance, but I think Ogre 2 was a little bit worse to me. I, I strongly believe that because of how much rape I had. I was literally playing out of my mind in the in the winner's bracket finals and in the loser or and in the grand finals. So we're sitting there and we're playing against them and we're up two one. There's uh I don't know, there's about three minutes left on Midi Bomb and Shockwave spawns pink side. Shockwave spawns pink side of the base. Routine. This is routine, right? He spawns pink side, he's looking up. Ogre 2 lifts up with the bomb, right? And Shockwave's the first one up. This should be a guaranteed kill. He shoots him twice. So Ogre 2 drops the bomb then. So this is three shots. Ogre 2 shoots once. So Shockwave has four shots on him. He misses. Ogre 2 just casually. One, two, double. Shockwave dies. We're like, fuck. This is unbelievable. Shockwave dies is unbelievable. They they plant the bomb. Us three, myself, Karma, and Ghost spawn on the bomb. We all die. They throw the bomb back up. Shockwave spawns Carbine side. Throws the nade. Hits a fucking wall. Doesn't get on him. So now so it was two two. Hits the wall. Then he finally throws the one on the pla uh, on the landing, and they arm it. And that's that's game. It was uh, that was game four, and that was the dagger. Then we went into t game five, which was TSB Beaver Creek. I think we got beat like fifty to fucking twenty, fifty to seventeen, something awful. It was just, and we were out of it. There, there was uh, after watching Chocolate just get completely dismantled. There was just nothing we could do. So we finish out the 2007 season in second place. That was that. So. Um, yeah, so that that is the story from the end of 2005 all the way to 2007. I think I've been talking now for about two fucking hours, so I'm really looking forward to getting off of this. Uh, I hope you guys all enjoy this. Uh, drop a comment in the YouTube, and as always, follow me on Twitter. I'm right there. Uh, if you have any topics uh, for Ghani Slots number 41, uh, let me know. Shoot me an email. It's in my Twitter bio. And as well, ladies and gentlemen, Maven and I start commentaries on our game on gameplays of pros starting tonight be on the lookout for those tomorrow and the next days uh, other than that thank you guys for watching and listening to me ramble peace Whew.